thank you Jesus à toi rassa c'est fait et comment la cabara cabata et chantette et ce qu'on peut recommander tout à l'heure mais there is hope because we can still hear you calling at what shot we know this is not our end because you keep calling we know there is strength for our journey because you keep calling as a Thank you, Jesus. I repeat it. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are still praying. Philippians chapter 3. I read from verse 7 to 8. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. On Tuesday, God servant was telling us that there is a call for intensified dedication, that God demands for more. And in the book of Song of Solomon that we read, we saw that the voice came to call, to call on to the woman and say, come away. But I observed that, I realized that when God make a call to come away, it's because that place where we still are, the place where we are still in, is a place that has a lot of considerations. A lot, a lot. It's a deep matter. It might, it might be sleep. It might be your school. It might be academics. It might be work. But because God called for an intensified dedication, a man who will come after him must count all but loss. You must be able to equate the, the dedication to your Lord and see that everything can be counted as loss that you may gain Christ. Tonight we want to ask the Lord that we will be help into surrenderness. That we will be help. The scriptures talk about a merchant that looks for a God goodly things. He said when he had found a piece of great price, he sold all that he has that he may buy. Many times the things that hold us back are things of consideration. Many considerations that we have. But the voice of our beloved come calling, say, come away. Come away, come away. Ascent peace, Kabila Taba. Erokotuatata. That tonight we will be helping to total surrenderness. Shebeleke berekete. That we will not hold back anything. In the day that God acts for all of you, you must be able to give all. I might not know what is holding me back. Because it is deep, but Lord, help me tonight into surrenderness. Help me tonight into surrenderness. Help me tonight into surrenderness. Intensified dedication. You must be able to discern the value in Christ for you to give all a shantata. When the man of the price of that the good of great price, he look at all that he has and is willing to sell everything just to have him there. 
Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good tears, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said unto, unto him, saying, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come unto thee on the waters. Bid me to come. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down to the ship, of the ship he walked on the water to go to jesus and when he saw the wind boisterous he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried saying lord save me and immediately jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him oh thou of little faith wherefore did thou doubt tonight we are going to be pleading with the lord I've no doubt the Lord has called us again to come to meet with him. But it is possible that the Lord calls you and you are distracted. It is possible. It was Jesus that called Peter to come. Jesus said, come, Peter, come. But he, 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 his, his gaze was shifted. He began to take, he, 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 began, to, he began to look at the, at the wind. He began to look at the wind. And the Bible said, immediately he began to sink immediately immediately it was not after the it was not after that time it was immediately i'm going to be asking the lord tonight that we help you to keep your gaze on him tonight even as you come to fellowship with him even as we come for intimacy with him that he will keep your gaze on him he will keep your he will help you to keep your gaze on him tonight that you will not doubt you will not doubt you will not doubt you will not doubt that you will keep your gaze on him that you will keep your eyes fixed on him onto the one that you have come to meet tonight that your heart will be clinged unto him that no distraction not will be strong enough to take your eyes off him not will be strong enough tonight to take your eyes off him that nothing will be strong enough to take your eyes off him you might want to say I believe Lord help my own belief I believe Lord Help my own belief. I am covered like a bell at I am covered like a a I am strong enough tonight to take my eyes off you let nothing be strong enough tonight to take my eyes off you i am a man 
Melatai, Aya Mene de Melatai, Araka Katashi, Elen de Melatai, Let's not be strong enough, Aya Lemena Nebelai, Elan de Beneliatai, Aya Karate, Aya Leo, Aya Leo, Ila Latayaka, Let's not be strong enough tonight to take my eyes off you, Aya Lakandiate, Elen de 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 de, Aya Nemanai, Aya Nemanai, Araka de Aya Nemena. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, and let can be nothing. Keep me focused tonight. Keep me focused tonight. I am the candidate. I reckon the men and I, and let the balata. I am the men and I, and let can break the day. I am men and I, I reckon the let's not see. Be strong enough to take my eyes off the Lord. Let's not see. Be strong enough and land the Bellata Balata and let the Bellatia. A raka baratai, ella rata tete, ella biata benenai, a raka biatai, ella ne benenai, a raka bai, a raka bai, a rete benetai, a sabbat. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Ekana mano shebeleta kababaka shata kako shebeleta kabalata. And I'm on ship and take a palata, a shot, a palata, a catosse. Tonight we've come to fellowship with the Lord. Tonight we've come to behold His beauty. Tonight we've come to inquire in His temple. Can we lift our voice and express our worship to the King of Glory? Can we lift our voice and express our worship to the Lion of the tribe of Judah? Can we lift our voice and express our worship? To the God that never fails, can we lift our voice and express our worship to the bride of Monisha? Somebody, can you express your worship? Can you worship the beauty of His holiness? Can you worship the beauty of His holiness? Can we raise it together? And thousand, my beloved, ah, my beloved, a more thousand, and thousand, my beloved is the more, the more.
Can we behold the beauty of His holiness tonight? We've come to behold your beauty tonight, Jesus. We've come to behold your beauty tonight, Yahweh. We've come to behold your beauty tonight, Yahweh. And oh, baby, you can't forget that I'm from the Lord. And that I'm from the Lord. Yahweh. Yeah, I'm from the Lord. Hallelujah to him tonight. We've come to seek the face of our Lord. Oh, I can you lift your hands up and raise your voice unto the Lamb that sits upon the throne? Can we raise our voice? Can we express our worship tonight? Our hands 
of worship, the one that sits upon the throne. We raise, 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 we raise. We turn the host of heaven, I will raise the sound. We turn the host of heaven, I will raise the sound. We turn the host of heaven, I will raise the sound. Amen. Ven la mano, sí. Eh. and destiny and on tonight we make a declaration that there is one that paid the price already there is one already that I paid the due diligence to ensure that he owns our lives and unto that we worship tonight we ask oh God even as your word will come to us let us respond in worship according to your word in the book of Romans because it's our due benevolence to give our life back to you receive our services today and receive us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we jam our hands together for Jesus? As we have our seat. Can we make it louder for Jesus? Clap for Jesus. And as you have your seat in God's presence. While you're seated, I would like you to extend a hand of fellowship to the brothers or the sister beside you. Can you make welcome your brother to church? Greet someone. Say welcome to church. Welcome to God's presence. You can have the promise that the Lord will meet you tonight. Are you sure about that? Mean it and say it intentionally. Come on, say it. The Lord will meet you tonight. All right, also in a bit to how much we have welcomed ourselves. We'd like to welcome all our online viewers. Be sure we know that you are part of us virtually. And we are sure that God is going to meet you tonight. Please do well to share the link with your friends and family. Tell them to join us tonight as the Lord has prepared 
our Father unto us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Every service God has been added to our midst. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. All right. The Lord has been adding to our midst every Sunday service. Hallelujah. So we have some first timers in our midst tonight. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, can you please be on your feet as we celebrate you as a house? If you are worshiping with us for the first time, you are passing by. Please stand up on your feet. We want to celebrate you. Outside, inside, please extend a hand of fellowship. Amen. Hallelujah. You're welcome to his Worship Christian Network. We love you so much. Thank you for joining us tonight. Please, should in case you are passing by, and we will have some tokens for you immediately after the service. Please do well to stay behind. Should in case you are in a rush, please kindly meet any of the ushers at the door. There are a few informations to give to you. Can we celebrate them as they have their seat in God's presence? Amen. We have a few testifiers in our midst tonight. Those that have signified that they want to give thanks to God in the midst of testimony. Can we make welcome? Oh, yes, some me, purity. Purity, faith, oye wumi, and omolola. Hallelujah. Can we have you? Please celebrate them as they come forward. So, let's see. Praise the Lord. Uh, I've come to bless the Lord for his faithfulness. For his faithfulness. I wrote everything down because I don't want to forget anything. So I've come to bless the Lord for his faithfulness. I've come to bless him over my life. I've come to bless him for, even for coming to Laotec. Yes, it's a great privilege and I'm, I'm grateful for that. So I've come to bless the Lord over my family. In the year 2020, I saw Jesus. Jesus came to my family. And that time, my siblings, they were against each other. Like, I can't really fathom how Jesus can come. And last year, I began to see the Lord draw my sister. We are five. I began to see the Lord draw my sister. She's the first one. And she had a problem, and she, she just she called me. I was in school, and she spoke to me about the problem. So we started praying, myself and a few of my friends. So we prayed and everything. And I, I had to go to Ibadan to meet her, and she started asking me some questions like Holy Spirit, God, and all those things. I really did not pay attention until I get back to school, and she told me that there was a day she just locked herself up in the room, and she was like, God, you are coming to, you You are making yourself manifest to these small, small ones. So I, I just want the Holy Spirit, and in our room, where she locked herself up, she 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 told me that she, she right, that she even received the gift of tongues even right there so i'm so grateful and even since last year i've seen the lord in our life i've seen the lord communications and everything i've seen changes in our life so i've come to bless god even over my family i've seen the lord also begin to draw someone else in my family so it's a privilege and i've come to bless him so I, I, I have come to bless the Lord again for the words he has been saying. Even though they don't really look as though they are possible. I, it's sometimes I have dreams and I be like, oh, it's just a dream. But I've seen the Lord come true. I've seen the Lord come true. I, I want to bless the Lord over my sister husband. He lost his job. And my sister messaged me. I didn't know what to reply. I just prayed. And all I could come back with, there's always the light at the end of the tunnel. And, and we, she, he, he just kept going even though he has lost his job he just kept going and all we received was, was that God still wants him there and um, yesterday my sister called me that 
he has been given an extension and he has gotten the job back. So I'm really, 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 really grateful. I want to thank the Lord over my friends, or over a few of my friends and myself. We are not the same person we came. We are not the same person we are in Andre level. I want to bless the Lord for the privilege for coming to AWC. The Lord has really, really, really been faithful. Has really, really been faithful. Dear God, I've come to testify before the people. And my summary is that you've been a faithful father. My summary is that you've been a faithful father. Hallelujah. Come and celebrate Jesus. I want to bless the name of the Lord. I want to bless the name of the Lord for my family. Um, 2021, November, um, my dad had an accident and which even when after the surgery, they said it was diabetic. So the flesh, it's now, it's, it's hard to heal up. I want to bless God. Even they did first surgery, second surgery, anytime they want to remove the bandage, the flesh will still open again. We, see, we can literally see the bone. I want to bless the name of the Lord. I could remember most times I, I messaged daddy that one of the things daddy always says that tell daddy, tell mommy that daddy will be helped. And indeed, my dad, when we were praying, one of the things that the Lord showed us that on my sister's wedding, my dad would dance with his two feet. I want to bless the name of the Lord that this April, my sister, she we, my dad did our wedding, and I want to bless the name of the Lord because my dad was not using any any support. He danced with his two feet. He danced with his two feet. Beyond that, is the diabetes. I just want to bless the name of the Lord. It's clear. I went because this same, that same April, we buried my grandma, and I asked him, I said, Daddy, you are looking fresh. Are you using drug? He said he's not using any drug. I want to bless the name of the Lord because he's, 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 looking, he's looking younger than he's looking younger than his age. That everybody was saying, Oh my God, that was that you using. And I want to bless the name of the Lord for provision. For provision. Honestly, indeed, God is faithful. Before that, there are no having two big parties in a month it's not really really easy, but it is the lord that have provided i want to bless the name of the lord thank you jesus and lastly i want to bless the name of the lord for restoring peace in my family peace in my family thank you father Hallelujah. can we celebrate jesus make it louder for jesus praise god Hallelujah. all right so i want to um appreciate the name of the living god for there are two pivotal, pivotal meetings that have been um, instru very instrumental to my journey of faith. One of such is in July 7, 2020, where Father and um, Pastor Shil Okewole ministered on the subject, the gods that provide. And during that period, I thought I knew faith. But should I say I know faith, but I've not been practicing it. But after then, I had to go over the message over and over and over again. And then I've been able to practice. And then I've seen the result, like tangibly, I've seen the result of that particular teaching. And secondly, I want to appreciate God for um, paradigm shift last year. I, I, I don't know, but there's they just this desire in my mind to come. I didn't know that the meeting would be that, would be that long. Yes, I didn't know that it would be that long then, but... I, I, I just give glory to God because many things the Lord has done, the Lord has, the Lord has, the Lord has done on my mind. Early this year, God was telling me concerning um, establishment. So I was wondering what, that, what would that have been. I didn't know that it was based on the things that I have heard in time past that many of such things will come. I really want to appreciate God for this um, great gift and I celebrate God for what has happened in my life. Come and celebrate Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Um, firstly, I want to thank God for what God has done in my life since last year I've came to this place for pastor to the sickness. But I thank God since last year, um, since I've been in it stopped December last year to, to, to this moment because I know you have to me every month to this moment. I give God all the glory. I give God all the glory for what God has done. And secondly, I want to thank God. I want to thank God on my life that on Thursday, God added another wonderful year to my year today. Hallelujah. Amen. For all of those testimonies, can we lift our hands to Jesus? 
and appreciate him intentionally for he is a doer of them all. He is a doer of them all. No one takes the glory. Him alone for the health issue, diabetes that was healed miraculously, the confirmation of the words of the Lord to our sisters and for our dear sister that came to this house with ailment, but Jesus took it away by himself. And for our dear brother also that testified of the hand of the Lord concerning everything he has done for him. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praises. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Just in the means to announce to us, um, we take our testimonies at the ushering stand. So please do well to drop your names if you have testimony at the ushering stand. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. Please, if you have your offerings and your tithes, package them as we will soon be on our feet to cast our offerings and tithes. All right, we want to bring to our remembrance of the Ark of Preservation. Can we jam our hands together for Jesus? If you have been there lately, you'll have observed that the drainage pipes for the roofs has begun to be in place. The burglaries are in place already. The walk-ins are already happening on the exterior. Hallelujah. God is indeed faithful. Yet we are still at the face of plastering, um, wiring, um, burglary and all that, please the Lord drops in your heart to partner with us and we are sure that this is God's project. Please do well to partner with us. The, tight, the account details will be on the screen. Please do well to partner with us. Online, on site, you want to give cash, you can title your envelope, the art project it will be received. You want to do a transfer do that, title it, the art project and the Lord bless you as you do so. Please be on your feet as we cast our offerings and tight. In HWCN, we cast our offering and tight with a heart of honor because we know God is not just interested in our givings, He's interested in how we give. Hallelujah. So, in this house, we confess that uh, we make confession to our offerings and our tithes, and the confessions will be on the screen. Hallelujah. It is time to give unto our God who is the Lord. So you will read to, with me. Giving time is honor time. And honor time is lifting time. Tonight God seeks honor. So we respond by giving. Knowing that it deserves it. And that it will be greatly rewarded. So as I give today. God is honored. And I am greatly rewarded. So I give gratefully. Honorably. Cheerfully. And with the expectation that a reward come. Please cast your offering rejoicing. See follower for go follower for love oh oka hope me oh yeah yeah I know I go love you eh yeah hope me oh yeah see follower for go follower for love oh oka Oh yeah yeah, I know I go love you way. Ah, oh to be oh yeah yeah. Say, I say oh, I say oh, I say oh. Emma she just so I say. We are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful. Be for the world, for go for the world, for love, oh God, for God, oh yeah, yeah, and we go love you, oh for love, oh God, oh God, oh God. Hallelujah. Can we have our seat in God's presence? And shortly the choir will be coming up to bring God towards songs. It's one end so that we can, our heart can be tuned for that which God wants to do. Isaiah chapter 6 exposes Isaiah. Isaiah said, even though he has been prophesying all this while, but a day came wherein he saw the Lord. 
And then indeed, he discovered that his dedication unto God was not um, complete. There was a part of him that uh, was missing in dedication. He said his tongue, his tongue needed to be clean. It's our prayer that even as the choir sings, you join them in singing as we hear the word of the Lord. Can we please celebrate Jesus as we make welcome the fairy worshiper? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Um, tonight, as we bring forth this sound unto the Lord, saying to him that we seek to give him more, um, I want us to understand that our journey with the Lord is designed to be progressive. The end is to have all of God. And that we mean we have given all of ourselves. But because it's progressive in nature, the Lord comes day after day to begin to seek more from you than you gave the day before. As we've recognized the call in this season, that it is another time to come deeper with God. I want us to lift up our voices and ask him again. You cannot give to God what he's not requesting. You cannot give him a gift that he, is not what he wants. Can you ask him, Lord, in this season, what are you requesting of me? What is the more that you want me to give? I'm not just assuming that there is, there is something to give the Lord. I want to be specific. What is the more that you are asking of me? This song says, I want to give you more. But we need to know the more, Lord. We need to know the more. Can you be intentional in this, in this moment, in this few minutes, and ask God, reveal to me the more you want from me. You might have heard this voice yesterday, but, 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 but today is another day. Today is another day. Lord, it is our desire in this season to come deeper with you. We know we will have to give more of what we have to gain more of you. Help us in this season that our dedication is total and complete. Help us, Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Mm, say, I want to give you more. Give you more. I want to share my life with you. I want to share my life with you. More than money can pay more for. More than money can pay for. I want to give you more. I want to give you more. I have so many things to say. I have so much to say. On the day that I see you face to face. More than an army could fight for. I want to give you more. One more time, say, Yes, I want to give you more. I want to give you more. I want to share my life with you, Lord. More than money can pay for. To say. I have so much to say. The day that I see you face to face. The day that I see you face to face. More than an army could More fight for. More than an army could fight for. I wanna give you you dwell in deeper than the ocean floor I never want us to win I take it again showing my love will be faithful proving my heart won't change giving you more than the day before for no day will be same giving you time of substance maintaining the place that you dwell in deeper than the ocean floor I never want us to win I want to give 
I'm grateful. Oh, I haven't hold you close to me that I may never be. I want to give you more. I want to share my life with you. Explain the affection that I have for you. I want to be the one who brings a smile to your face because if you need more from my heart, more from my soul each day, each day, let me give you more. Share my life oh, with you.
celebrate the choir. That, that, uh, I'm a music person. Okay, so, uh, I have to compensate the choir somehow. So I owe you. I owe you. And I will pay tonight. Yes. Don't worry, when we get into the ark, they'll do this song again. You will now, maybe you appreciate the hard work. You know, because I was bothered how a choir will do give you more. It's, um, it's, it's a masterpiece. Can we celebrate the choir again? We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. All right. We have um, a few of our brethren from Ibadan from the Awake Network International and um, I want to ask if they have a spokesman so that they can maybe bring a greeting or maybe an instruction um, so that I can begin to join. Where's Oba? Is he in church? I want Oba to come and do what he did for me in the Lord. I want you to help me celebrate Oba. <laughs> My experience in learning with him was, was an upgrade. Smile now, smile. You did well, smile. Yeah. All right, so let's have our brethren from Ibadan. Are they within or outside? Do they have a spokesman? Okay, get me a mic. Uh, you may be seated. You may be seated. So, so please, um, you can offer our brother the uh, microphone. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Uh, we want to sincerely appreciate uh, what God is using our Father here to be doing in the body of Christ. It is beyond what mouth can see. It is beyond rhetorics. We sincerely appreciate God's wisdom and humility in his life. Our church, please let us clap our hands to appreciate God in his life. Thank you, sir. Uh, ever since I've met Reverend, my kind of humility, the way I see humility have changed. When you see a man of God with grace, so much grace, and authority and power, and yet so humble to the extent that it did not belittle people, is a very great grace. And that is what we so much appreciate because this is what is lacking in the body of Christ. And sincerely, we have come to submit to this wonderful ministry, sir. Uh, we want to learn more, we want to know more of him, we want to learn more of God, and we have decided intentionally to follow the opposed to feet. Thank you very much, sir. Can we church in three minutes? We, you can come to stand. Sir. You can come to stand. You can come with the brethren. You can come with the brethren. You can come. You can come. Just come. Just come. Like all of you can come. Now, I want you to understand the the solemn touch to this moment. We want to ask the Lord that the helps that we have found, the graces that he has bequeathed to us will be replicated in this work in the city of Ibadan. Can we pray, church? Just stretch out your hands towards them. There will be such a release of grace and I'm trusting God that in a few years it will be difficult to differentiate between the two houses. There will be such an intensity of drawing, the tangibility of transfer will rest upon the work. We are not a people strong without help, so we ask of the Lord that there will be a communication of the same order of help. 
you will be known for strength you will be known for accuracy you will be known for consistency you will be known as the prevailing company yes the councils of the Lord will be hosted within your ministry we have been assigned angelic entities to labor with us it will please the Lord to replicate their labors upon you there will be an opening of the depths from which we draw and you will draw by inheritance draw by inheritance church can you pray in the name of Jesus there will be a replication of the intensity of prayer power yes that even the least among them will be a man of prayer there will be an insatiable hunger for the truth of God's word yes they will not be afraid to be different they will not be afraid to stand out and through them God will reshape the city of Ibado let the commitments of God to us word be replicated in their work. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, by your instruction, with open hands, we receive our brethren. That according to the speakings of the Apostle John in 1 John chapter 1, we may have fellowship together. And that this fellowship may be defined by the fellowship with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Let it be a fellowship of reality. Let it be a fellowship of truth. We give you praise and glory. Because a new work has begun in Awake Network International. Great grace rests upon you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So, so we hope to be seeing them. I was with them last year. Am I, am I right? Yes, last year. Last year. And we trust the Lord that there will be a lot of interactions so that we grow together. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Can you please celebrate our bread? All right. It, it's, it was a busy week. Um, I was to have four conferences. I did only three because I felt exhausted. Um, so labors outside here began at the University of Oshun. You know, Oshun State has a way of naming things in a, in a mirrored manner. Yes. What you see normally is uh, maybe Oshun State University. No, their own is Uni Oshun. Um, that's the Kiri campus. I was with the JCCF on Thursday. I had two sessions and my subject was intimacy. Now, because we had more ministers than myself, I decided to trust the Lord to come um, at an unusual angle. So my first session was intimacy with the burdens of the Lord. And my second um, labor in the night was about, I think I preached for about, about three and a half hours. It was on the subject, journeying, um, journeying through spiritual places. So, I, I pleaded with them that they should please give us the record because they are, they, are, they are good sermons. They are good sermons. All right. So, I came into town briefly to see my beloved wife and uh, my son. And I was gifted the surprise of seeing my beloved daughter too. Please, can you help me celebrate in the kitchen? It's, it's good. Let them see you. Let them see you. All of us are fine in our house. Stand, stand. Uh, let them see you. That was the reason why the saxophone was was very good to do. And may, may God give you understanding. All right. All right. I've been now. Okay. So, um, 
And I had to leave town quickly again to the city of Ilori. I was to minister at the first conference of one of our ministry sons and um, a beloved brother too. That's uh, Pastor Genesis Adekulu. Um, it was two conferences in one. I was to minister on the subject, the glory of God for the main conference, Friday night, Saturday night. Saturday morning was supposed to be a minister's conference and the subject was the way of um, the revivalist. It's not the path of the revivalist. The path of the revivalist. Well, Friday night was um, was worrisome to me and my son Timothy was with me and I was explaining to him that even though I felt a little bit tired, I also felt that the atmosphere was touched. And so I had to make two adjustments. The first was to move the pulpit away from, the move the lectern from the pulpit. And then I had to summon this young man to come to Lauren. And the rest was miracles. Yes. From the time we began to play yesterday morning, I got my wings back and I could fly. So, I preached yesterday morning, almost, how many hours? Over three hours on the subject, not so. It was a sermon topic that drew inference from the utterance of Elizabeth. After seasons of waiting, she finally gave back to a son. And um, on the day of birthing, it was rejoicing from neighbors and cousins according to the word of the Lord. But on the eighth day, that company changed its texture of manifestation. They came to enforce a name that was contrary to what God had given. And Elizabeth needed to respond, not so. So we were invited into an evaluating room and we evaluated ministry on six grounds. The intent of God for ministry, the location of God for ministry, the timing of God for ministry, the purpose of God for ministry. I couldn't do six in the morning, so I went to rest. Then came back in the evening and by popular demand, they didn't want glory of God again. They just wanted not so. So we had to do not so part two, um, giving off the two remaining indexes of evaluation for an accurate ministry. Five was the procedures of ministry. How do you get members? There's a God way for membership growth. There's also a, a secular way to grow it. There's a God way to make your ministry popular in a city. There's also a worldly way. And then we closed with the sixth, which was resource. Um, yes, resource. Resource. Um, well, I have to do with resources. How do you get funding? You know, in a little way, um, I have experience with funding. At least the ark is something. That it's possible to do what God has called you to do without stealing. Maybe some of you don't know. We have never held any conference in depth. But that's not the testimony. It's that we have never held any conference that reduced our regular store of money by one naira since we started doing conferences. Not once. So, the ministry has always been richer after conferences than before the conferences. That's been the story. Because we don't do conferences because we want to do them. He orders them and he provides for them. So I had to teach some of these principles of staying within the center of God's will and still um, balancing things. Okay. My second sermon yesterday evening was um, the path of the revivalist. It was to lay the foundation that there are essentially fivefold um, expressions of core ministries. However, there is an auxiliary office that is opened when the feedback of the divine appraisal reveals that there is a scarcity of God life in the territory. What God does is that he morphs willing men into the shape of a revivalist. And we labor to give out the tokens of a revivalist. That a revivalist is, does not start his journey as a praying man. He starts his journey as a readied man. And the proof of readiness 
is that your heart can play host to the burdens of the Lord. That's how you start. Your call as a revivalist is basically, is largely secret than open. And your only tool of trade are the burdens of the Lord. The many things that we see happen on the landscape progressively that bring us into the big bang of the revival are actually milestones that the revivalist in secret journeys with. They are supposed to be stones of encouragement that um, make him know that God has started doing something. So, how many of them? Seven? Yes. Seven. So, I'm not only going to speak about the first one. I know they did a good job to make sure that the recordings were good. I started ministering about 5.10 and I had to stop when I saw that it was about 8.15, 8.20. I walked into that meeting tired, but when the sound started coming, um, everything went well. I was supposed to have an all night yesterday, but uh, wisdom told us that we should rest because the shape of ministry in Obomosho advertises the warrior culture are you with me? The shape of ministry in Elorin is signified by a trumpet. And so, there are certain sounds that the Lord will be pleased to make into the body of Christ that must not be released from Obomosho. It was in my body state that my brother, my friend, Pastor Fola Omotosho of um, Believers Banquet Christian Center offered to give me the privilege of doing one sermon every month for like 12 months. And so I decided to seize that opportunity to use the texture of ministry in Elorin to release a message. The large series is captured the letters to the churches. And so we began this morning from the letter to the church in Ephesus and the sermon was titled I know thy works well I, I couldn't go far I preached for about two hours plus yes because I had that, that would be like two hours twenty minutes and all that I could do was introduce the one who was speaking to the church in Ephesus these words saith he who holds the stars in his right hand and who walks in the midst of the candlesticks. That was all we did for two hours, 20 minutes. So I trust the Lord to be there again every month, just one Sunday every month, to release that trumpet because the one who owns the church is agitated. He wants to see recovered his lost heritage. And I trust Jesus that in our time, the kingdom will not suffer loss. All right. My subject for tonight must end tonight. Um, however, I have a burden. But my burden was carefully scripted so that um, latest by 6 o'clock, I should be preaching this. There are just five things I want to say. If you sense my voice, you'll find out that it's gone, but I bless the Lord. I will bless you, Lord. I will bless you, Lord. How my soul cries out to Four more times. And I will bless you. I will bless you. Yes, I will bless you.
Prosper in us. Prosper in us. Let hindrances be taken out of way. Oh, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You may please be seated. Thank you, Father. So my charge is titled Declaring Harvest. Declaring Harvest. Some of you who have been privileged to do business on my WhatsApp status have been privileged to come into some background information to this to this annunciation. On Thursday night um, as I began to minister on the subject of intimacy in Ikiri I perceived that we were a gifted company. It's not an unusual thing because if you have been a student of scriptures, you'll have found out that in Luke chapter 1, when it was the lot of that priest called Zachariah to offer sacrifices, he entered into the place of sacrifice alone, but he was gifted company. There was an angel that stood, and um, when he engaged, there was a communication. Uh, um, I had an experience yesterday night. I shared it. The close of that conference was supposed to have some kind of impartation. Gifts were supposed to be given, but um, I began to share on the on the reality sharing relationship in the Godhead. That in the day that a man begins to desire gifts, he comes into the fellowship of the Spirit. Of because it is the Holy Spirit who gives. So the Bible says that there are diversities of gifts, but there is one Spirit. So every time you see a gift at work, it means that the Holy Ghost 
as part of the triune nature of God is involved. Are you with me? So when I made an end of speaking of gifts, I, just trying to go through that portion of scripture, began to make an attempt to give voice to the entity who sits on the throne that um, others administrations and the word administrations is the same common word ministries and then I found out that the Lord came to that meeting instantly I had to switch from being a teacher I became a worshipper and his, his essence became quickened and Oba, if you paid attention you find out that there was no communication of a gift it was basically the recovery of lost ordinations and the bringing into ordinations. Now, with hindsight, I understood that what he was doing was validating his presence, that it was he, the Lord, who came. And so what he was distributing were the things that were under his watch, callings ordinations, spiritual offices. We couldn't press into God because what God would have done was to bring about variety of operations so that in the callings, Jesus could call two prophets but God will come to make the two prophets different from themselves. Are you with me? That's what we call the diversities of operations that we can achieve the same purpose using different means but all of them God means amen. amen okay so I've been having this ministry experiences so I began to feel that there was an entity beside me but I knew that his assignment was not intimacy so I was very focused until I made an attempt to describe use a normal human relationship to describe some reality that exists between the man who is in love with Jesus. So I called a lady and I said, are you in a relationship? She said, yes. Where is the young man? And she said, he's not here. He's at home. Okay. After a few minutes, I called another lady. Where is the young man? He's at home. So I became bothered. It means hundred over hundred. Because there were only two. Um, the witness was the same. That there was no brother in the congregation. Who was in a relationship with a sister. And that bothered me. So I decided to ask a question. Is it that sisters here. Don't have plans to marry the brothers here. And it was as though the answer was. Had been decided in a sister's meeting. The answer was chorus together. The brothers are poor. Yes. That was the answer. Pastor Dillon. And the brothers are poor. Huh? So, I now began to feel the heat of the being beside me in greater dimensions. So, I understood that that being that I eventually got to know as an angel influenced my choice of sisters. Are you getting me? God is the chief manipulator. And when God manipulates, manipulation assumes a positive posture. Are you with me? It's like jealous. If you claim that I am a jealous brother, you are wrong. If God says I am a jealous God, he's right. What makes jealousy good is the God that they added to it. Are you with me? So, I felt led to lead a prayer for the brothers. Because I yielded, then the Lord began to speak to me. Now this angel that came is not one of those angels that are primarily in charge of the economy of the kingdom. Finance. No, this is not one of them. Even though the emphasis that I was perceiving was financial. So when I got back to my hotel room, I decided to put, I think before I put my line, where's my wife? She's outside. 
Okay, I can't remember if it was before I wrote or after I wrote, but it was the first person I told. Because Emmanuel may not believe me, but my wife by covenant should believe me. So I told her what the Lord was saying to me that he was emphasizing that a gate had opened. The challenge I had was that what I was hearing was not like the Lord was speaking. It was like somebody was speaking on behalf of the Lord. So I found out that that entity followed me from the hall into my room. He was saying to me that a gate, I'm going to read out, uh, maybe I should say what he said. I'm, I'm still going to go to it because that's just what I want to build till like 6 o'clock. So man, anywhere I get to once it's 6, stand up. I round up this and go. I pray that I have speed. Um, what he said to me on Thursday night, he said, opening to the saints from tonight is a gate of great financial increase. That's what he said. And then, maybe supposing that my heart will say, why is it tonight? And I heard the words, yes, God blesses and provides every day. However, there are special days in God. Now, this is why it was at this point I knew that it was an, a mystery on behalf of God because God is a master communicator. It could have read, I bless and provide every day. Are you with me? Immediately I spoke to my, so, so, my dear, who, who did I, what did I say first? Was it, did I call you before writing? I called before writing. You see, I like you. Okay. So, I called her, spoke to her, and now wrote. But because, um, I do a lot of business around the angelic. But I'm not too schooled like some people. You must know your specialties. So, I had to pick up my phone, and I called prophet, Adesoji Adekoli. Um, you are the angel prophet. It's not prophet, angel. It's just angel prophet. So, um, have you perceived the movement of an angel with emphasis on finance? Who is not an angel of finance? You know, I don't talk money like this. Uh, Reverend Austin said, ah, Tolu, I will pray. He said, because you, you don't talk about money. So if you bring that emphasis to the body, it means that um, God is saying something. And if I had the whole night, I'll give you testimonies from everywhere. From somebody who prayed on Thursday night, maybe the person saw it. And Friday morning, the mom, the mom got to work. And what they told the mom was, ah, you were supposed to have been promoted. So we, we are owing you the, we backdate your promotion to four months. And then they wired in the excess money. Are, I don't want to tell you the amounts that have walked into people's accounts. Because he doesn't lie. Now, if you have been on my page, you will have seen what the prophet write, uh, wrote. And I tried to attach his name to everything. He was bringing visual witness to what I saw. The first thing he saw was an angel with a basket on the head and he said to me that the angel was gifted a name. The name was Hebrew but uh, he, so that we don't complicate your minds. So that so the name was left out. However, it was not that the angel was sent to occasion financial fortune but the angel was not an angel in the department of finance. It was an angel from the department of harvest. It introduces a complexity to the shape of the day. Because it means if nothing has been planted. You can just be excited. And so I had to receive further instructions of the Lord. And that's the purpose of my release tonight. That we are not we are in a new day but it's it's not a a day per se according to the word of the lord it's a window a window is not designed to grant free access it's like 
time stopped only to be continued almost immediately. In my perceptions, the engagement period is one week. And so, in case you don't hear another thing today, I want to encourage you to engage not just in prayers. Those who are planted, it's a time to place a demand because the second vision he had came with four different things that I will read to you, four different layers of this financial harvest. And the last thing he spoke about um, was a picture that looked like the invasion of a palliative um, a, a, a palliative um, warehouse. All kinds of people running into it. So, those who have been sowing, not just financial, sowing prayers, sowing finance, sowing labors to advance the kingdom will be rewarded. The Lord added that it will also be for those who have been sowing prayers, sowing finance, and sowing labors to advance the brethren are those who are up for reward. So, one of the things you can do is that if you missed the last sowing season, you can still benefit from a window of harvest if you convert your harvest or the harvest window into a sowing window. That you begin to labor to advance both the kingdom and the brethren, give to the kingdom and the brethren, and then um, pray to advance the kingdom and the brethren. That's my summary. But let's look deeper into scriptures because somebody is saying maybe reverend needs money. I won't tell you about the shape of the harvest I've got. But it's not, it's not normal. It's not normal. If you have your Bibles, come quickly to me, with me. We'll start from Genesis chapter 1. My entrance statement is that there are verses of scripture with which we can establish that the reality of times and seasons is captured within God's design for operations in the earth. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 14, help me quickly. Genesis 1:14. The Bible says, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide first. Let me relocate my first. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven first to divide the day from the night. On a second note, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years this verse of scripture instructs that within the shape of operations in the earth there is an allocation for the reality of seasons for days and years Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 The Bible says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So Genesis 8.22 also validates that there are demarcations along time frames and seasons captured into the shape of the operations of the earth. This is supposed to bring to us the consciousness that no two days are alike. No two years are alike. Like this, this shift in seasons were designed on the physical side to be governed by lights. Shifting seasons when they become spiritual seasons are also designed to be governed by spiritual lights. And when we use the word light spiritually, 
we are bringing witness to revelation so that if God wants to move you from a season to another what it will do is to send you a word somebody say a word a word the word is designed to introduce God's concept for your new set of realities many times they come with a clause of engagement so that if you yield you come into what is prepared and if you do not yield you spectate what was prepared now i told my wife i was going to ask a question i, I told her on friday i told her this afternoon when you saw that um, how many of you saw it on our whatsapp page no raise your hand well okay good how many of you prayed on friday how many of you prayed yesterday how many of you have prayed today you see the numbers are reducing it means tomorrow there will be one person on tuesday nobody will pray again jesus said he that to he have asked of me nothing therefore ask that your joy may be full it means the end of prayer is fullness of joy because you are not private to the quantity of prayer that you need to pray to get things done you are supposed to stay until you come into the literal experience of fullness of joy or according to paul's letter to the philippians you come into the economy of what we call the peace of god the peace of god is supposed to be the first deliverable that comes to a man when you are prayed i i have a shape of what i want god to use money to do the ark is one but i have had another need recently and i've not been careful to ask god i've even been very specific as to the shape of the delivery that I want. Because I don't want that one to come and then have the problem that this one has, sailor. So I've been very specific. This size, nothing smaller. This size. Because I need what is a need, it's not a want. And it has become a need. The need has reached here. I want to plead with us that when there is a communication of this sort, we engage. Let's assume it was a lie. You have gained stature praying. But it was not a lie. It's because we are on, on YouTube. There are things I will have told. There are miracles I've seen that I will have told you. Unfortunately, a couple called me. They are not even too close to the house. Say, Reverend, when we saw that thing, we saw it Friday morning. He said he called his wife and we started fasting immediately. They are not house people. One of our ministry sons said, We've been trusting God, we've been trusting God. Immediately we saw that thing, we started fasting too. Someone said he called their ministry together that this is the gold mine, 21 days fasting. There's a way children of the house can become used to the instructions of the house. And you know, I could have told my wife, maybe I could have told Woli, maybe a few of my brethren, and then you will have seen me in a new shape, and I'll just say, God did it too. But it's not the way of an accurate shepherd. Every fellowship I come into with God, I will not be a true shepherd if I do not attempt to want to bring the people into it. However, the people must show up willing. I was given an example this afternoon, this morning in Loring. And I said that when you were saved, you were brought into an already prepared kingdom. You, you ate your cake. It did not reach me. Abby. God bless you. So, it's a prepared kingdom. However, there are labors so that you can maximize what is in the kingdom so i gave a very mundane example and it fits perfectly i was sharing with them how that um 
if you wanted to ingest a certain product called Gary, some of our online people don't understand what Gary is because you have not been on this side of life. But we have been here for a while and we understand what Gary is. It's, it's produced from over-processed um, cassava so that most of the nutrients are gone. Yes. The design is not to give your body nutrients. It's just to fill your stomach. May God show us mercy. Amen. Now, that's what Gary... That's what... No, <laughs> Jibwal, am I lying? No, there's nothing inside. You, you just... And you know... It, it's, it's a blessed substance because what you put, what you expose to water is not what you get. It has the capacity of, of it's, it's inanimate, but when it comes into the fellowship of water, it becomes organic. You are not a person of my son if you don't know how to use words. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's organic, it grows. Now, it, it could be further enjoyed, like I explained, if you add, if you put additives like um, sugar, like granite, and I was very careful in the learning to say that it could be granite or certain other products, name with health, that are byproducts of granite. May God give you understanding. Okay. So, you can put milk, but if you make the mistake of adding very cold water, maybe what we call iced water. You see, you will not like suffering. <laughs> ah, look at mm. now. If you, very iced water with Gary creates a problem, it makes your sugar insoluble. Because I was explaining to them that there is um, a molecular bond that exists in your sugar granules that requires basic temperatures to break them. That's what makes it soluble. As the temperature begins to drop towards zero, it becomes more difficult to dissolve. And so you find out that because of density, your sugar granules gravitate towards the lower part of the cup. Am I right? Now, what I'm saying is, 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 is in nutrition, but it, there's a scientific explanation for it. That's what I'm giving now. Now, so that because your sugar granules have gone downwards, you can begin to complain of the unavailability of a sweetener, even though it is present. So you can say, Emmanuel, you didn't put sugar in this thing. And after a while, when you get tired, Emmanuel comes and all he does is to engage a little bit more by staring. And then he drinks the sweet part. You suffered, but you, didn't, you suffered without sweetness. In the same way, the realities of the kingdom, the Bible says, God, by his divine power, has or hath giving unto us all things that pertain unto life and unto godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and unto virtue but you see if a man does not consciously engage he will bring witness to the unavailability of what is available he will claim that there is no that he is helpless because he has not placed a demand for the help of God. So, like staring is to the one drinking Gary to bring about a robust experience, you will need to engage. My labor in the learning was in knowledge, but in this wise, you need to engage in prayer. And I found out that even though what I wrote had no prayer inside it, the only response people were given was amen. amen and i was wondering what aspect of this thing is prayer there was an instruction that said people should pray but people were saying amen you have watched morning morning prayer too long that you think that it only works by saying amen pray i pray
prayed in English. I prayed in tongues. I rested a little. I woke up. I prayed. I prayed. I was going out. I prayed. I was driving. I prayed. I was in public transport. I was praying. Other things. And then when an emphasis comes to that issue too. Lord, this is. I maximized. Now that I'm around, I would create an altar of prayer. At a specific time of the day, I will mark the instructions of the Lord. That's what wise men do. That way you don't forget. Between five and six, I will, you, you can choose that time and pray. And say, Lord, many other things, but you have promised a harvest. Make it good in my life. Because he has been making it good. Amen. Alright. So we have a foundation that the reality of times and seasons are captured in God's design for expressions in the earth. Now, according to scriptures, the time, these times and seasons are not designed to be mystical to everyone, but they will be mystical to some. And it doesn't put you at a bad place. There are things that God will not need to give to everybody. For example, the holistic concept of our faith will not be given to you, Daniel, from God. It has been handed down to the saints. You will need to receive by reported witness. In the same way, you will not be able to walk into the revelation of every season. And that is according to scriptures. A particular clan was revealed to us in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. They were called the children of Issachar. And they were flashed to be men which had the understanding of times. They were custodians of a set of scrolls. And if you want a set of manuals. It was because every time God occasions a season in the earth, taking full advantage of that season will be by instruction. So they had a bank of instructions. Every time a new season was about to be occasioned, what was delivered to the children of Issachar was a manual. Let's read. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, and of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. So that's, that's what the understanding gifted them. It gifted them the ability to know what to do, to know what was required for alignment, to know what was required to optimize or maximize seasons. The heads of them were 200. Even in their own clan, not all of them were knowledgeable. The heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. They did not subjugate their brethren by force. They gained leadership by the possession of a rare gift. Are you getting my point? So, they were gifted for their brethren. And the Lord has made me understand that this ancient, the realities of this ancient clan who were masters at this masters at demystifying seasons um, are still with us. As long as there will be seasons, God seasons, heaven seasons, occasion in the earth, there will be the foundational requirement of the realities of the children of Isaac. So, some of you are Yoruba, some of you are Igbos. Maybe some of you are Hausas or Fulanis, but whatever natural tribe you are, the realities of the 12 tribes of Israel have become spiritual realities. So, right here in this building, outside or online, they are children of Isaac. And their specialty is to be able to demystify a season before it arrives or as it is arriving so that their brethren can come into the prophets 
that God has put together for the new season. It's in that ship that I came this evening. For that ship one. God is potent every day. And I want you to say to your neighbor. The call to pray always is because God does not go on potency vacations. He does it. God is potent every day. However, the reality of a kairos, the kairos is a head a moment. It means that something moved, something moved, something moved, and then the collision or the full maturation of a season is what we call a kairos. The reality of a kairos is a revelation that the potency of God can be amplified at face value. Now, these are spiritual things and honestly, I don't have the right words to to bring them. Maybe it was, if his papa was just preaching, he knows what to say, but I'm just trying to bring you into the fellowship of something that is largely mystical. When you come into that kairos, some people call it kairos moment, but you see, the kairos is a moment itself. I mean, so just let's leave it at Kairos. It's called an opportune time. It's a time when everything that is supposed to work to produce a result are working full blast. The person that is supposed to come from UK to help you has arrived. And on that day, his car will not have a flat tire. There will be, there will be no fuel scarcity. You know, everything is working to ensure that there is an appearance in the location on time. Are you with me? Good. The event of a kairos advertises the amplification, the heightening of divine potency at face value. But that's not what is happening. It was not that God became more potent or became stronger. Rather, it was that God manipulated hindrances to give his way or his will free course to flow without hindrance are you getting my point 10 things that should happen so that power can go from here to there when a kairos happens there are no cut cables there are no bad switches so it's like God comes in advance and tampers with everything that the enemy he locks into place everything that the enemy can touch to hinder a delivery he makes sure that everything is working well. So that things that will have taken many years take a short time because by his will he has lined them up for a delivery. Are you with me? So it will look as if God was faster today. No. It was that he didn't have, he had least resistance in this season. Are you with me? Alright. So when that kairos happens, it happens because God intentionally removed every hindrance to allow him come to you. Two, a kairos is occasioned because God multiplied the number of implementing functionaries so that if the idea is to pass this microphone to the back, if the next person, solution, can you stand? If the next person is solution, there are many things that can happen to this microphone if I don't want to live here and she's not supposed to live there. It means we'll have to throw it. And in throwing it, if she's not trained in goalkeeping, I doubt it. It will likely drop. And the new labor may be how to mend it and not how to deliver it. So what God does sometimes is that he recruits everybody on this line. I'm telling you how to pray. <laughs> ah. It's not everything that came late that was designed to come late. Some of you are saying God is powerful. What, what is the hindrance? Daniel prayed for and God heard his prayer. So, there was no hindrance to the traffic 
of Daniel's prayer. His incense got to heaven. It was the messenger that, see now my dear, it was the messenger that God sent. A messenger that was sent by the weight of divine potency that, that the prince of Persia will laid on the road. You know why? There are laws that God ex, ex, respects even in his operations. And one of those laws is the law of territorial control. If there was nobody impartial to have dislodged that prince, God will need to tackle that prince to get to you. And if there is no supply of prayer engagement to keep that prince or to keep that angel, sorry, let me put it this way. If there is no continuous supply of incense to keep telling God that what you sent has not arrived, uh, Daniel will wait in vain. They will use not 70 years. 70 years self had passed. They will have been there. Maybe, maybe there will be no Israel now. How many hours did he stay praying? Scriptures didn't bring us into the hours. How many days? Now, his 21 days was needless. If there was no prince of Persia, the day he prayed, he said, you were heard since the first day. So the extra 20 days was to sustain incense so that heaven will know that we are not free yet. The last time you went to a Yoruba CSE church, they said you should pray against only dinner. You said, I'm, I'm saved. God will show you. Every time I have the privilege of those churches, eh? I, I forget everything that I know. If they say put your hand on your head, that that your that your your head is your creator, we'll pray this one first. When we get back, we will go and analyze. <laughs> ah, they'll say you should remove your shoe and lift it up. And say everywhere you have trekked, walk using this shoe, you drive through the place. You're not saying no, that's that's not sound. May God help your life. Amen. There are hindrances. And I'm telling you that in heaven, God has no hindrance. In the heavens, God has no hindrance. It's, it is as regards to the earth that God has hindrance. And it's not because the enemy is stronger. It's because man has not learned full responsibility. Heaven, even the heavens belong to the Lord. So God takes full responsibility in those two dimensions. The earth is given to the children of men. So if there's no accurate priest in the territory, you had better take your life in your hands and pray against only dinner. Because oh wow, I told them in the Lord today that if you go to a meeting and they say, Shango is not powerful, they are lying, no. It's not a God when God comes. But until God comes, Shango is a done. <laughs> ah, may God help your, your heart. All right. So, what God can do. So, there is a prayer against hindrances. When hindrances are off, a kairos emerges. Another thing that occasions, my time is almost up. So, maybe it's for another day. But I've told you everything. I would come on Tuesday and give you the remaining side of it. But this will help you pray. When God wants to produce a kairos, he may not take away hindrances. He may multiply functionaries. So what we could do is recruit everybody on this line to the back. And like the passage of a relay baiting, everybody readies their hand to receive from the person in front of them. We will that way not run the risk of breakage or destruction. Are you with me? Good. I believe that to occasion this season of harvest by my communications with God, God has manipulated both ways. He has taken away hindrances and two he has multiplied his functionaries. But because I don't know what the hindrances are, I have an idea of the kind of functionary 
that he multiplied and that's where I'm going to close however I have placed you on the path of prayer you have two prayer points your delivery will be within the context of a kairos an opportune time what are the things to do when you await a delivery in an opportune time is that you pay attention to your human relationships because many times God will bring your deliveries through men are you with me pay attention to your human relationships everybody that doesn't dress like important you talk them down you can't do them when you are waiting for a harvest because you don't know who are you with me in a kairos people who don't have something can give it i've labored around conga for a long time there are conga deliveries that i delivered that i could not afford so if i came to you to deliver on behalf of the buyer or the one the one who procured for you and you now and i say i, I came for a delivery and you now say I was talking to Timo, you were there yesterday night, that my brother and friend now, Pastor Sayo, how many of you know him? Was around during my birthday. The first time we met, because he, for many years he was the personal assistant to Reverend George Adegwe. So his office was in Baba's house. The first time I met him, I went to deliver an item for Baba. That's how we met. So when I met him and I gave him the item, I've been heard him, Pastor Sayo, at any, what dropped in my heart was, Kai is my brother. We have ministry to do together. But how does a delivery man tell the PA to the working Bible that we have a destiny in ministry together? So, me, I just kept it in my pocket that uh, God, you have started to clothe me in the secular like this. When you take off the secular garment, so when he came during my birthday and I was wondering, what did you come to do? And he said, for about two three years he's he's been on his heart that we had a destiny together in ministry and that we even have off ministry brotherhood oh, what's the matter i've been thinking but <laughs> if i said it to you i don't maybe you'll have said you are not okay you can't tell who i think they have a functional gym in remel chapel in Lauren. very robust I delivered all of the equipment. I could not buy half of that thing. So there are times God sends men to you who deliver what they don't have. King makers never sit on thrones, but kings never emerge without them. May God give you wisdom. In harvest season, you need eyes that are stronger than these two. There are those who cannot give you the harvest. Who can only pronounce the specific thing that will come. And sometimes some of them are not. They don't look blessed. There was a drink they brought for me in the Lauren. That drink, I've seen it only once. It was the gate man of the hotel that we stayed over that um, brought it to me. I just heard a knock on my door and then the great man came in and knelt down. I said, I said what's the problem? He said, said, sir, we too used to listen to your messages. He was the one that brought the drink. That thing scared me. Even the person at the reception said, Reverend Tolu Abola. I said, I don't know. you. said, I have your excerpts on my phone. Oh, I've listened to plenty of your messages. That's why you have to be careful. Pay attention. Don't be rash. A child of God is not. Be courteous. What did I say? Be courteous is one of the keys. Human relationships must be handled delicately when a kairos is occasioned. David just lost everything. He had prayed. And the utterance 
of the prophetic was pursued. For thou shalt overtake and thou shalt recover all how without fail. But that prophetic utterance was not going to find fulfillment without a man. And who was the man? As they journeyed along towards Ziglag, they met a small boy. That boy was part of the band of thieves that robbed them. And because this boy had become dead weight, he was, he was sick nigh unto death, wounded, they abandoned him to die. It was compassion that restored the losses of David. It was compassion that fulfilled his prophecy. The Bible said they took the boy, took care of him, gave him water to drink, fed, yes, water to drink, and when he revived, he now began to lecture David as to where his boss is camped. And it was in the midst of eating and drinking that the future king of Israel landed upon those who stole from him, wasted them, and according to the word of the Lord, they recovered all without fail. What if they walked past? God, I fear you. He does everything to be on the right side. That if a man says, the season has passed, nothing happened. He will say, did you engage as required? That's why I think that's what I'm supposed to stay with. One of the functionaries that God multiplies, and this is my closing chart for the part one of this thing, because that day will still be around on Tuesday. And probably it can be longer. I just feel it's a one week opening, but it can be longer. Is that he multiplies the functionary called the prophet. Somebody say the prophet. He multiplies the functionary that is called the prophet. Because in multiplying implementing functionaries, he multiplies, he can multiply in the angelic dimension. Those are heavenly functionaries or multiply in the earthly dimension which are men. He can use ordinary men. But an, as an advanced party, what he sends is a prophet. And this is in no way to confirm that I am a prophet. If, if you know me, you know I'm not. But I found out a verse of scripture. And that verse of scripture gives me a different definition to this prophet functionary that he multiplies. That's my closing verse here. Hosea chapter 12 verse 13. The Bible said, And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Anybody can prophesy. But the Bible emphasized by a prophet, not by prophecy. It means what God does as a startup is that he clothes a man with the realities of an office. So, in the day that you will leave Egypt, because my feedback from God is that there is a cry from the body of Christ, a cry that there is financial oppression. That many are beginning to renege on their commitment to Jesus because of survival. And so just like during the lockdown, people made names, giving out palliatives, including the ones that they stored and people stole. God wants to make a name, giving out palliatives. Things that people will not have been able to labor to come into. Those are the things he wants to give so that he can create a remedial path to keep many more on the path of truth. Our capacity as the body to survive lack has been weighed and we have been found wanting. So lest many depart from the path of truth, God wants to create something. And so he, what he does is that he sends a prophet. If you take out, if you look at the original translation of the scriptures, the word or more original translations, that's what I mean. You will not see the word prophet there. You will see the name of a man who became the metaphor for prophet. What you see there is by Moses. 
But I believe that why it pleased God that the word prophet be put there is that um, before we come into the understanding of Moses as a metaphor, um, we can enjoy what he stood for. And the word prophet there is not essentially somebody who speaks or somebody who sees or somebody who knows. The word prophet here symbolizes a custodian of the counsels of God. He knows what God is doing. He knows why God is doing it. And AWCN, mercy has privileged us to camp around that kind of ministry. The things we hear every week about the agenda of God are not heard like that everywhere. It should be difficult for anyone under this cloud to derail. Because you know when God comes smiling, you know when he comes angry. And you can know it immediately. It changes his posture. It's not labor. It's mercy. Are you with me? We are like a, a son of Issachar company or children of Issachar company that the timely switches in the agenda of God are not hidden. But the reason for that shape of existence is that oppression is broken, deliverance is secured, and preservation comes. What God announced to me on Thursday was to secure this twofold reality to bring people out of financial oppression and to preserve them in abundance. My encouragement to you is to follow through with those instructions. Please, you help me put it back on our social media channels and I want to call you to pray. In closing this first part, because I see a lot to say in declaring harvest, I will give four instructions. And I've given all of them. I just want to bring them together. Instruction one is that you pray. The Bible is not anti-praying when you sense that a harvest season has come. Ask for the rain. In the time, not of the former rain. For the former rain is the rain that prepares the field for planting. It was in the time of the latter rain. That's the rain that precedes the harvest. Am I right? I agree, people. And then the Lord will make bright clouds. It means the notion of a harvest must push the one who seeks a harvest to prayer. You must ask of the Lord. Are you getting me? So pray. What prayer points should you pray? Instruction two, which is an extension. Pray that God takes away every hindrance that has been positioned between you and the harvest. Now I'm speaking to those who have a, a harvest in view. If you don't have a harvest in view, start planting now. Mercy can, they are hybrid crops. So it means they are hybrid labors too. They are hybrid seeds. They are hybrid prayers that can grow within a week and bring you to a harvest. You don't believe me. I have scriptures for everything I'm saying. They employed somebody in the morning. They employed one in the afternoon. They employed one in the evening. They employed one in the night. Did they pay them differently? So the guys in the morning say, ah, my boy said then now. What did the Lord say? Did he employ him? When I came, when you came, we signed a contract that if you work for 10 years, we'll give you a millionaire. And you said yes. This one signed a contract that if he works for two hours, we'll give him a million naira. What, what is it to with you? That's, how, that's what operates within the procurement environment. If there's an agreement in procurement, you can buy a 15 naira pen for 5 million. And you can't come back tomorrow to say they cheated you. You signed an agreement. So if you know nothing is come, don't assume oh, you know, you know. You should be true to yourself. So, that's your only labor. Pray that hindrances should leave if you have a harvest in view. And then pray that God will multiply functionaries so that there will be no diversions and there will be no lag in time. Third instruction is that you pay attention to your human relationships because many times God advances men by men final thing is that you should come into the posture of your father Abraham 
and it is that you should rejoice in waiting. Your hope, your expectation should occasion rejoice. So celebrate your harvest in view. I'm not saying spend the remaining money you have and say because another one is coming. What God is sending is not so that you can be more beautiful. He has the kingdom in view. And that's something that Wally said to me very strongly. He said, sir, what God is sending is for the kingdom. That he, God told him that he's even giving to people who may not have done much, but whose heart is set on advancing the kingdom. May we not have testimonies from outside and we be spectating in the name of Jesus. I'll give you a finishing part on Tuesday, but please engage. Can you encourage your neighbor? Please. Please. Glory to God. The Bible says, surely there shall be an end and your expectation shall not be cut short. May that be our story in the name of Jesus. Alright, so let's go into our labors for the day. Thank you, Lord. Lord Mo antesus peratos, mo antesus ifina tontafiase, baro sofe hanto vika, bat bele son to mi kina sovara hanto setidia. The witness of God is that there is a drawing in the house. There are places of more intense interactions that He bids us to come into. And the simple cry is, Lord, we will go as far as you want us to come. Can you pray in the name of Jesus? Barate soso andi etomi lo siatabo. Oh, Kabovia, eke kemo vento kazi zondeleha. Bayanto se bakata. Barata tan da semelapambe siabatada. Bebian emesova, besembo tetwa. Braski benan sababata. A papeka pe palanta kibote. Besomia befata. Oh, we yield to the summons to ascend unto you. 
Bai kofera tote keko onte kwa keke Soka kando mekinata Kabata pakambe teke masabiate Brase kufatales Let every weight be shed Kai Papa roske bono asoso Precious kafelonte Aminonte sisata Weights in the mind Weights of the flesh Shabarata katabia sitedas We yield to the summons to come up And we ascend without burdens Shabambalante Patele babalanta memofane Abria sosikeya Eko kota laskata Abieso Selebo tetete mefinita Ombele so sota, shambi ambere to sota. Carry me, taka bobo bobo kata. Efenon te ko saben bilite porakos, 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 porakos. Kata babara akako beton beta jeveta. Babi ebesha, bate tebelan toka baba. Pressi bali, pressi feketa, pressi sepilote, abi ebele se kabe, pia sambe na tai, abembe na denda, bate dede barata, bate sabile, bate basaita, akoko babarata, vata tate tai, ai, eko koko koma mama kata, akele gede se teka, rate ke ligele se kaya, Shate kebelanda, rasia kaka kaka kata, ataka kiaba, brakata vakata, zaka taye, sheli bakata, bate mbosati, bate kapolati, para sobre kefeta ya, some kembo bo bo bo. It's a time to come beyond the mountain. The gates are open, and we are sent. And we ascend, and we ascend, Same Mephelata. We leave no one behind tonight. Sakakakakakarata, Sabrakakatata, Satetesa, Sakapapapa, Satwai, Venedate, 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 Setaya Papapapa, Saboro Sokemama. Akita skope pele, esoka pele ati, zakwato koto, ekoto kotania, zakele gele sa, shaba baba kai, ai, ai, esaba bara baba baba bayo, esote te te to, katia te, katia kat kat kat, katia das kat kat, shante kele kaka kaka. That was God at the time. Oh, come here, come here, come here, Samele, Samele, Papi Atoso Kemelote, Adele Boparatata, Prosenko Koto, Katwato Koto, Sakatele Bekora, Ayato Keyase, Esode Keke Kata, Rasketo Tomada Bahai. Sabe de piaça, sabe de lente, sabe de Shut up, 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 shut up
Carry. 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 We were shaped as eagles. Not to walk the earth, but to do business in the heavenlies. We come into our prescribed habitat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Our cry, oh Lord, is that you will shut the gates behind us. That there was there will be none that was born into you. That returns, that returns. Close the sea behind us. That this company of Jews may journey until they come into Canaan. By both Sabre Bohan to Kaba, Bakaba Bonte Kuskabalata, Babela Babroska Pintabona, by Babo Sisa, Baton Sebe Van Bataste, Batefendia Brasai, Brasotov and Papa Hanta, Balitalia Chata. We travel as one man. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Ah. <laughs> We are desperate for you. Ooh.
Thank you, Father. That a craving to give you more will rest upon us. Yes. <laughs> Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You may please be seated if you can. There are certain subjects that must not be introduced until a people have been found to be willing to journey yonder. Second Kings chapter 2 gives us a picture of such journeys that to discuss inheritance when the Jordan has not been crossed is inaccurate. In the same way, if it is about making heaven, such subjects as dedication should not feature in your sermon. If it is about getting from a kingdom into which you were brought by the precious blood of Jesus, if it's all about getting, then we can't discuss dedication because you don't need to be dedicated to get the basic things of the kingdom. Until the people have journeyed into a corridor that imparts not cravings for things, but imparts responsibility. Dedication does not become a worthy subject. And that's why I perceived that God was drawing us away. So that in case you traveled, and I'm asking Jesus that will not leave anyone behind in Egypt. One of the proofs of traveling is that you will be obsessed with living a life in gratitude for what he did for you. I did not say doing things in gratitude that your life itself is an offering. When you wake up, your waking moments your movements across time are motions releasing incense to God even if you are never given the privilege on a podium. That's the shape of the believer who has gone beyond. He has seen a sight and that sight cries only for dedication. Jesus in teaching about the value the value Yes, the valuations of kingdom reality spoke about a man who having found but let me it's good to have you back so you will soon preach here now <laughs> a man who stumbled on a field that embodied great treasure because of the sight the bible said he went and sold everything that he had so that he could purchase that field. There are certain labels, certain expressions that a believer cannot willingly come into if he has not seen. So you need to journey beyond your friends until he's the only one that you behold. Citing him has a way of imparting you with the craving to give him your all. My entrance scripture is actually from 2 Timothy. Am I right? 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, if I'm right. And I'll read the first four verses. There is a principle in verse 4 that I want to use as a gate entrance. Now you start from the beginning. From the beginning. From 1. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers and when you see prayers in the midst of a list of kinds of prayers what you do is you substitute the word petition are you with me all right so i exhort therefore that first of all supplication petitions intercessions 
and giving of thanks be made for all men. It was like a 5 a.m. call. And you know what do they do at what do they do at 5 a.m. call? What happens at 5 a.m. call? 5 a.m. call is call to prayer. If a mosque is, is within your, your area. Are you with me? So this is a call to prayer. And Paul was communicating with his son Timothy that when it has to do with men, ha, I don't want to enter here. I won't be able to teach my this thing. Because what I wanted to teach was that when the subject of your prayer is another man, there is a progression in prayers. The average person who wants to pray for his friend, oh, but don't play for, he's like, me and you flew. So don't play for 10 minutes. If I feel you have a problem, I want to pray for you. Where will I likely start from? Intercessions. But it's not accurate. Because your misalignment may be the purpose, may be the reason for your misery. God help him, help him. And God has said in scriptures that there is a way iniquity shields a man from the help of God. So when you want to pray for men, the arrangement is that you start with a cry that God aligns that man. And that's the subject of your supplication. It is also that God aligns you who is praying because your priesthood will suffer loss if you are misaligned. Are you with me? Um, where is Pastor Jerry? Where is he? Uh, he's our media pastor. So, what you will do is, um, we have a someone like progressions in prayer. Yeah? Uh, so, God will inspire me, but just write progressions in prayer. And please help me write this verse of scripture. I think we need to look at it. I know we are praying more, but we should also be learning more about prayers. Are you with me? Good. So, thank you. I know the topics are plenty. God will give me life to teach all of them. Don't, don't, don't be worried. And you're about to say, why should we write again? I'll remember. All right. So, that's verse 1. For all men. Verse 2. For kings and for all that are in authority, not in positions. It's for another day. <laughs> ah. um, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Because there is a way the enemy can labor around kings and those that are in authority. That's those that have been vested with the spiritual virt val um, um, virtue that makes that gives them the capacity for governance one of the realities of government is manipulation the capacity to manipulate that you want to stand my wife and my son were doing that in this afternoon my wife wanted him to eat the young man wanted to watch his cartoon my wife said sit down what she was doing was using authority to manipulate his will. I know it was positive manipulation. Don't worry. But it was still manipulation. Because you are trying to make him do something that was not in his mind to do. So that's one of the, that's one of the, the, the potencies around authority. Because this, the decisions of kings and those in authority can either make you suffer or make you enjoy and if they have the ability to vary your, the state of your welfare, then it is possible that they may impact upon your honesty and your godliness. That's why you should pray. Are you with me? Yeah. Verse 3. The reason why you should do this, apart from what you will get from it, there's a benefit for doing it. But the benefit was advertised to be superficial. 
The foundational reason why this must be done is because it is good and acceptable, not in the sight of men, but in the sight of God, our Savior. And when the word God, our Savior is used, the person is Jesus the Christ. I hope you know God the Father is God. God the Son, who is also God the Word, who is also Jesus the Christ, is God. Did you see my response on your page? Were you the one that was chatting with one one immortal guy? See, please clap for her. Uh, I carefully read your discussion, read your discussion. And I said amen to your prayer that there will be many more contenders for the faith. I saw the way she, and it was, it was not, your head is big. It was scripture upon scripture upon scripture. I said, ah, ah. I'm happy. So one day, you will do that thing here. Very soon. Uh, when are you going to finish exams? You now go home. Okay, when you come back. So, go and pray. Enter the wilderness. Do those things. Then you now come back. So that your frame will spread abroad. Amen. Amen. All right. So, I'll backtest a lot of things when the new session breaks. A lot of things. Because I think that my feet are, there are wheels on them now. The only thing is I'm, fine. I'm looking for a way to be carrying my wife around. But to I'll go out to go to school. So maybe we'll get him a mobile, a mobile education assistant. So my wife needs to be thinking about it because I'm beginning to get bothered about my not being around him. I honestly love being around him. Thank you for keeping that house for us. I celebrate you. Please help me celebrate my wife. <laughs> For it is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4. Speaking of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. The Bible did not say that God will save all men. Now, I gave my wife an assignment and I'm helping her to do it now. The Bible did not say that the will of God will save everybody. His will is that he desires that everybody be saved. But he knows that he cannot save everybody. If he had it settled in his heart that he can save everybody. Supernaturally, he will have saved everybody. This is a, a, an expression of his desire. Now, if, if it was within my capacity, and I know you're about to say, don't mention capacity. God is all powerful. Well, there are gates through the potency of God that do not affect his capacity, but affect the ex outworkings of his capacity. That you lock the tap does not mean that your tank is leaking. Are you with me? But it has pleased those who constructed the plumbing system to subject the flow of what is in the tank to the movement of a tap. Man was created as an entity of choice. And so his choice does not make God impotent. But his choice controls the degree of potency of God that manifests in him. Are you with me? If you are confused, just go back to plumbing class. The reason, there's water in your tank, but your room is not flooded now. It's because you were given a, a tap. The tap is a facility that confers upon you the power of choice. To have water flow or not flow. To have it flow for a while and to stop the flow. Are you with me? They are tap-like systems that God has placed into man and they function within the context of the gift that man has that is called the gift of choice. It will grieve the heart of God that people will not spend eternity with him. 
It will grieve him more because he had done all that needed to be done to get them saved, which is an advertisement of his will. But premised upon the ability to make choices is also the um, foreknowledge that not everybody will confess the lordship of Jesus. That is because of these things that we prayed so that we can go far. Because understanding is far. Amen. All right. Now, my labors are, no, that's, that's the first part. There is a reality that God, oh, yes, a reality, an experience that God has prepared for everyone that ultimately comes to the gates of salvation. Is that they not only joy in their safe status, is that all of them come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's the desire of God. Foundationally, the truth here is to represent the gospel. And what we speak of, of the knowledge of the gospel, is not that which saves from eternal damnation, but that aspect of the knowledge of the gospel that delivers the experiences that are embedded in salvation. Health, fellowship with God, victory over the powers of darkness, the access into what is happening in heaven, the ability to draw from the supplies of the spirit. These are all the things that are designed to, be the, to define the experience of the man who is saved. God doesn't want you to only advertise saved. He wants you beyond your labors to advertise salvation that your life becomes an advertisement of salvation. When people look, you know there's a difference between advertise. I'm saved. That's a good one. But you can be mute and your life can be self-advertising of your safe status. They knew who you were before. Like those are your pictures, before and after. They knew who you were before. They can see who you have become now. And then when they research, they come to the knowledge that the only thing that can be responsible for this kind of exchange of life is that you have met Jesus. Ah. that's the foundational interpretation of this scripture but we cannot draw a principle the principle is that God desires that every truth that, define, that, is, that defines experiences in the kingdom is fully expressed to the believer not just mentally but experientially. You don't know it if all you can testify of is recognition. You don't know it if your only experience with it is acknowledgement. You truly know it because you have experienced it. I said to us that in your journey in scriptures, there are three basic, and when I use the word basic, it means the, some of those things are hydra-headed. They have streams. There are three basic classes of knowledge as regards the communication of the truth, whether it's of the word of God or a spiritual reality. And the first is environmental communication. It is a witness that is born to the truth that is sourced in other men. God is powerful. That's a communication of a truth. It does not mean that you can establish that reality in the Bible. You who heard it. So that in case a, in South Africa they call them Sangomas. That's the word that came to my heart. In Yoruba land is Babalao. You said in the north they call them Boka. Yeah. In the east is the SMO. If the SMO meets you and says, you say God is powerful, how do you know? All you can say is, but a man had told me, and if all, that's all that you know. 
You also hear that Boca is powerful. I told you a story. It's, it's funny, but it's painful. Now, one of my brothers in the north said, thieves, I've told you here before, that thieves used to rob one church. They got night guard, they prayed, they did everything. One day, the pastor came and said, I met a man who catch that thief this night. It was the pastor himself. Say, what kind of man? Say, it's one boca down the road. There's, there's a medicine man that will deliver the church from robbers. <laughs> Now the members say, are you sure? We have prayed though. We have, we have recruited men. He said, I trust that medicine man. Mole Fogwe Bari. Was the pastor. Well, the boca was invited into the premises. And he didn't sleep there. The man stood in front of the pillars of the church and manipulated something and went home. The following morning, the armed robbers came and they were glued to the pillar. So the pastor came and said, see, but I told you that this man is strong that in the day that the house of the Lord was under oppression we needed to go to Egypt to get help the custodian of God is like the high priest saying I trust in Dagon ah Dagon say <laughs> Now, this is not my Yoruba. If you've met a Yoruba man, maybe an Oboma man who has stayed long in the north, their Yoruba is very conk. This is how they talk. So, as you brew, a long boy, you can. Well, the boka delivered. Now, remember that that, bo that boka will be remunerated, it will be from church post. <laughs> Ah, may we come into the knowledge of the truth yeah. what I don't know is how that pastor will ever be able to preach that God is powerful because the elders who know the story will say mm, Boca is powerful so you will need to know more than they said that they said that the average person in church knows by reported speech. You will need to journey with what was reported into scriptures. And in scriptures you will come into what we call doctrinal knowledge. That's a doctrine, a, a, a knowledge that is sourced from the teaching of the scriptures. That's why we are laboring like this. And we are not laboring just saying things. We are picking from scriptures so that we can establish truth in a way that it can stay. Many times when I come like this, I use obvious scriptures. I will share with you and Pastor Timothy that when we are coming, that the reason why I use common scriptures is that I don't want to bother your mind in church here to memorize too many new scriptures. Peace. That's what you do at home. What I want to do is that in case you will not yield, you will not read your Bible. The few scriptures that you know, you will know them. So that if it's John 3, 16, we will look for every relevance that John 3, 16 has to your work with Jesus and trust him to express everything. It's like you're giving one orange. Some people are wicked when they take orange. They peel it so the orange has suffered Nine thing to take away the skin. They now abidami. They now cut it. They now squeeze it. But they will not free it. They will see it all it. If life, if we live long, there will be people who will even eat that one that they throw away. But that's how we're supposed to approach the world. That whatever we feel is the leftover of our consumption. We need to be creative as to how we can still benefit from it. It may not have vitamins, but it may have certain antibodies. So, it, it should still be chewable. Are you getting my point? That's the design. Full knowledge. So, you go from historic, um, environmental, which is largely historical, 
Because the pastor telling you to, the person telling you to may have heard somewhere. You go into doctrinal knowledge. And then the Bible says concerning the verses of scripture that the entrance of thy word, it giveth light as illumination and it giveth understanding to the simple. And I've said to you that that scripture does not suggest the penetration of the word of God into your heart. It rather speaks to us that every verse of scripture, what we call the word of God, is a system of doorways. Like the door of your room is called an entrance. So when you approach onto a verse of scripture, engagement will open the door. And if you step into it, you will become a subject of light. You will be enlightened. And you will be gifted understanding, which is the which is defined as the possession that gives the ability to connect utterances and events together in such a way as to be able to predict a future outcome. If I put, if I switch on my gas burner and I put water inside it, inside the pot, and I leave it there, it is going to boil. So if your outcome is not hot water, you will need to vary one of the conditions so that you don't get hot water. Are you with me? If I prepare custard and I don't want the surface to be dried, I will need to introduce a liquid. Are you with me? So many times we'll put water on it, right? Am I right? Yes. So that's functioning in understanding. So when you enter the verse of that verse of scripture, it offers you the privilege of a world of experiences. And by experience, you now establish truth in its third layer. So there is that is called experiential knowledge. Or you call it spiritual knowledge. It is experience based. It is administered by a practical teacher. And according to John chapter 16 verse 13, the Holy Spirit is a practical based teacher. He does not tell truth. He guides into. Are you with me? So the desire of God is that everyone that is saved is brought to the knowledge of the truth. So when God introduces a subject, this is where I'm going. The principle from there is that the will of God is not that that subject be known in fullness by mentioning it. Be known in fullness by studying scriptures. It is designed to be known in fullness by ending the progression that began from public mentioning to scriptural labor. It ends in an experience. That's why we have the subject, the shades of our dedication. We have mentioned dedication so much in the last three, four weeks. This is where I'm going. And the average person here, we require sound this evening, in dedication. The average person here already has that word in their heart. Some of you have dreamt, and in your dream, somebody said, be dedicated. We have tried to establish the scriptures and we will go ahead to establish more. But the end of our labor is to come into the experience of dedication. So what we want to do is to view the many sides of the word dedication. So we have a holistic view and then we can trust the Lord to be able to plug in with all his streams to express what we call dedication are we good you are confused say i not come to church today okay you are fine you say jesus all right so that's that's good when we're coming i told i was looking for one scripture one scripture once the scripture i was looking for was this one i needed something to enter to help me establish what i was after all right so we'll go by way of definitions just five things and then we're out. So, point one. 
We just want to see the meanings of the word dedication. Dedication means going all the way with God. Dedication means going all the way with God. This definition finds relevance within the context of one of the identities of the believer, which is his identity as a pilgrim. You were, I said something in the Lord yesterday. I said, I think it's on one of the excerpts, or two days ago rather, that Jesus does not leave men where he saved them. And it's a technology. That technology of, of translation was something God pioneered in Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis 2, 7, the Bible says that the Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul. Now, God didn't leave man in that location. Now, God took that man and next verse, verse 8, verse 8, help me. God now planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. So man was translated from the ground of his formation and relocated into the, glad, the garden of his vocation. Because in that garden in Genesis 2.15, he was gifted a twin set of vocations. One was to tend the garden. The other one was to guard it. Some translations say to nurture and to keep. To dress and to keep. So he takes a man. That thing that we call translation is actually a transport reality. But translation will be difficult where a man has not labored into the reality of dedication because he can start the journey and not arrive. A New Testament version of that translation that we see in Genesis 2, 7 and 8 is in Colossians 1, 12 and 13. Giving thanks unto God who has made us, help me, who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light who had delivered us like a baby out of the womb from the power of darkness which is a territory and has translated, transported, moved us into the kingdom of his dear son. So one of the foundational realities of your experience in salvation is transport. Now, you will not be able to go all the way until you are dedicated to God. So one of the meanings of dedication is going all the way. Not going with God, but going all the way. Somebody say going all the way. You remember Elisha? Elisha became a recipient of the double portion of Elijah's spirit because he went all the way. John became the custodian of the mother of Jesus, mother, your son, son, your mother, because he went all the way. And only John got to the cross and stood at the foot of the cross with Jesus' mother. So there was a handing over. At the resurrection, John and Peter were the ones who came a little after the women to the sepulchre to see what had happened. And as they journeyed, there was a way John masked his identity that he ran the other disciple, that's what he called himself, because he was younger than Peter, he ran out around Peter and got to the sepulchre, but he didn't go all the way. It was Peter that went into, he went all the way, and so he was gifted an encounter. 
I know that you have been hovering around God, but dedication means going all the way. It is a deliberate commitment to journey till the end with God. When we're young, give me Matthew 19, 23. Let, let me read something from you. But when we're younger, there was a song we used to sing. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. So that song has two major parts. I have decided to follow Jesus. It's a decision that the average Christian will make. What converts followership to dedicated followership is the end of the song. No turning back. Meaning that I will go all the way. How do you know this song? The title of the song itself is All the Way. Hi. I have made a promise that I won't forsake. I am yours forever. My heart is yours to take. I know I've cursed you more than I can take. Ah, you have not heard this one. The last time I heard it was on campus. I think it was either. Uh, but the title is All the Way. I'll look for it. It's an old song. I don't know, old, those old songs, their lyrics was, they stemmed from the hearts of sincere people. But you know he will never neglect his child, nor will he ignore a tear in your eyes. You know that one? I love those songs. The righteous won't be forsaken. You don't know it. I think that was Jemos. Uh, Jemos. Jemos. Those songs, they kept us going. I remember when I was in 400 level IT. It was during my eyes that I read the books, This Present Darkness and Piercing the Darkness by Frank Peretti. It was one song that I used to babysit myself. God is just a prayer away. You know the song? She's why not? All you need to do is call. He won. He will hear your faintest cries. He is concerned about you. Angela, download the song. This like that. Listen. The title of the song is "He's Concerned." I will cry small. I will read small. Weeping me. Endure for a night, but the morning will bring joy. He won't give you more than you can bear, for he is concerned about you. You know, those songs were ah. he knows he cares. He sees, he's there. He'll carry you, for he is concerned about you. What I put into turn? Not because the songs now. I'm just one. No, the songs are still, but people were sincere. I mean, even the songs that came out of America were sincere songs. We had jivey ones too, like the commissioned guys. They were still sincere. If you come to my phone, you see that I have not a complete breakfast. Our Father, you know the song? We long to call you by your grace you have adopted 
now we're your children. So it's doctrine. You now, let me, give me a hack. My voice is bad. Abba Father, we long to call you. That's Romans 8, 15. By your grace, you have adopted. Now we are children. You now received us. Joint hairs with Jesus. Our Father. Our Father. They are doctrine songs. The next line is the awesome love you showed to us. Goes beyond our wildest dreams. You saturate our lives with grace and mercy. And because of love, you chasten us when we should go astray like a father, our father. You now you see those kind of um, but now is Ama available? I be, no, no. <laughs> no. I, I'm unavailable. Inside church. <laughs> you saw it. Some of you have seen it, Abby. Now, if you don't will be swelling. Say, Kai! I don't get him. It's like there's no end to the depravity. All that pray, what it can give sound and let you walk. If they are saying that something is wrong, you should be afraid to do it. The English word is impunity. It means you are functioning, damning everybody. Any, anything you want to say, say, I will do this thing. Ah. It is well, though. That our father is, is, is Fred Hammond. It's Fred Hammond. The, I think the album is Pages of Life. I didn't have the original. I bought one twenty minutes cassette, recorded front and back. When the thing caught, I bought another one, dubbed it again. Matthew nineteen twenty-three to twenty-seven. What? We'll finish. We'll finish. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, "Very I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly." Enter into the kingdom of heaven. Next line. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go to the eye of the needle. Now, the concept of the eye of the needle is a kind of gate in Israel. It's not your needle. Are you with me? It's like, um, we have some gates like that in the north. Some houses as not too tall, not too short as I am. If I want to enter the house, I will still enter like this that's what the eye of the needle looks like because a camel is gifted height so it means the camel will need to bend so it's it difficult for it i used to think it was it was needle and i want with jesus ah. <laughs> even tread finds it difficult to enter needle why a camel so that's what and i'm saying this because the people who go to this seminary have an advantage with biblical interpretation. But I've said that you don't have an excuse because there are too many resources. When you see a verse of scripture, the first, in, the first interpretation, listen carefully, of the verse of scripture is not what comes to your mind. Every verse of scripture has a foundational interpretation and it is gifted a context of interpretation is its original place of mention so in understanding the eye of the needle you will not look for a needle you will go and find out what they called eye of the needle when jesus said what he said are you with me because this portion was not said to you the scriptures were not written to you. They were written for you. There was a primary audience. Everything that was said had a meaning 
to the primary audience so that is the meaning of the verse when you have found that meaning you can now draw principles and lessons from it that will now impact upon you because if we take a sewing needle what we're trying to say is as if you are rich you will go to hell it is easier and you see that jesus said a camel can go to the eye of a needle it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle it's an it's an act in humility in a business than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of god it means a rich man will not want to suffer being abased and so his rigidity his confidence in his wealth will not allow him subscribe to the principles of the kingdom so he will experience difficult let's go on when his disciples heard this they were exceedingly amazed saying who then shall be saved it means none of them had sworn the oath of poverty everybody had an expectation to be rich so they were saying being rich does it mean that we'll go to hell what did jesus say to them but jesus beheld them and said unto them with men this is impossible but with god all things are possible as 27 then Jesus then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. That's the statement of a dedicated follower. The latter part reveals that Peter wanted a sight, a peep into what we gain. He said, What shall we have therefore? But my focus was Peter's initial utterances we have forsaken how many? all you can't forsake all if you don't know all so it means that the one who would be true to forsaking all must operate by an updated list what do I mean by an updated list? if you have 10 things today you forsake 10 things the day your 10 things become 11 things that there's an update in possession there must be an update in forsaken are you with me so if you have one shoe that shoe will not carry you to a disco joint did they, did they say use disco is that a disco joint to a clubhouse when you have two shoes two shoes you will need to swear an oath with your extra shoe. Now you, you will not follow me then. So as your list of possessions is being updated on the left side, you are having more things. Your list of forsaken things will also be updated on the right side. We are forsaken all and followed thee. So that will the first shade of our dedication and if you like and call it colors of our dedication is going all the way with god the second the second shade says dedication means the willing or lifelong submission of one's life that God becomes the absolute owner. So the first is a reality of a journey that begins in God and ends where God ends. The second is the reality of ownership. There is an additional reality that comes with ownership. It is the reality of controllership. The boundaries of your control are supposed to be defined by the boundaries of your ownership. This is your fine suit now. It means your wedding suit will be very fine. Me, I'm already preparing my heart. So, 
is Agbada I will wear. They have even measured me Agbada in, in London yesterday. Because plenty of you will start marrying. Yeah, so, at least let me begin to try. I've closed my eyes. I've seen the Agbada. It looks good. So, I'm saying that because you own this suit, you can decide to wear it with a turtleneck. You can decide to wear it with a tie. You can even decide to wear it with a singlet or with nothing. Uh, musicians wear it with nothing. Some don't even wear clothes. I'm saying what you do with it is at the mercy of your control and it is because you own it. That's the life of a believer. Your will is supposed to ex exist in servant mode, not in controlling mode. God has thoughts. But you see, the thoughts of God are not receivable on a plate. There must be a part of you that was designed to think. So when you come into the kingdom of God, that part of you that was designed to think will now be deployed to relate with the side of God that produces thoughts. So the mind of the believer is a receiving system, not a processing system. To receive the thoughts of God. Why? Because he owns you. You called him Lord, so he must govern you. However, the reality of your submission to his government, to his ownership, is not called dead. It does not attack, attract the word dedicated until it becomes a lifelong decision. So there are people who are submitted to God, but we cannot call it dedicated submission until a decision has been made that from we sang that song in the Lord yesterday. From something to final dream. From life's first cry to, to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. It's a lifelong decision. The dedicated know they, they have an idea of how the enemy can checkmate their relationship with God. So they are masters of advanced processes. Before Satan shows up to derail me, I will have tied my leg. Are you with me? That in case Satan wants to drag me, one of our friends, they stole their generator one time. The guy changed the generator. Unfortunately, I think they had a lot of money when they bought the generator. So they invested in lent length of cable and length of chain so when the thieves came what the thieves did was that <laughs> because their power cable was long the thieves made the, the generator travel far <laughs> and then the rope to travel far so when they got to the end of the chain which was at a long distance where these our guys could no longer hear sawing activity they now saw the rope the next problem is how do they carry away the gen? They just pull the gen and the thing removed. The guy thought that fire finished. Until in the morning he saw the far distance where the, the cut chain was. You must bind yourself by utterance. My spiritual father, the apostle Roman, was saying a few years ago, he was teaching about things that will sustain your commitment and one of them was oath taking. Lord, don't say God kill me the day I follow you out. No, no, no. Lord, I want to follow you. Please, in the day that I decide not to follow you, stop me from walking away. You may forget but you will walk into a season of your life where you will begin to endure resistance. And when you cry out to God, 
He will say, I'm against you because I'm for you. There are things that give me confidence about my work with Jesus. And confidence in my ability not to fall by my will is not one of them. It's that there are many utterances. Lord, you know I love you. But you know I can't keep my commitments to you. I'm a man. Can you do everything you know how to do to ensure that I stay with you? Thank you. In Jesus' name. Sometimes your life will be like Jonah for a season. Because in the life of Jonah, God was a keeper of commitments. He called a man and kept that man against the will of that man in the call. God has such potencies. But oath taking can preserve you. Lord, I know that a man can only successfully sin against you if he has not committed you to keep him from sinning. You remember Abimelech took a man's wife. But when God came and said, you have died, though, he said, but you know, even you, God, you knew that I took this man's wife with a pure conscience because the man told me that the woman is his, sis, is his sister. God said, because I saw your heart, I kept you from sinning against me. You remember that someone we preached last year? Unto him who is able. The, the, the full verse is unto him who is able to keep from falling. But you can activate that keeping capacity by an oath. Lord, I don't want to fall. I give you the privilege to do all it takes to keep me from falling. As long as you are committed, I will endure all it takes to be standing. Those who are duping people to advance ministry are not different from us. What has kept us from that part is a commitment, not a commitment kept, not just on our side, but much more on the side of God. That told you, on this financial thing, I will stop you from hurting me. It's easier to preach error from scriptures than be diligent. I was sharing with you this morning that I went to sleep around 12, 30, 12, 45. And I woke up at 5 a.m. I now sat with Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. And there was only one line I was doing business with. I know thy works. So I established my base. And like a spider, I was now reaching out finding scriptures that entered it finding scriptures unfortunately i could not even enter i know that works i stayed that star in the hand and walk it in the midst of the candlesticks we also know how to just open scriptures and say what is on our mind not minding what happens to your belief systems but he has kept us from being frivolous with his word. And in the day we checked and found out we might not survive. We became dedicated because of his own commitment. You know that you can be in the choir. And for 20 years you will not sing a secular song. You know it's possible. You will make a decision. That Lord, my, my voice will be submitted to your government. And because your government will not sponsor a song that does not advance your cause, let my lips not be able to sing a song. You won't go mute. But God will, will aid your commitment by successfully manipulating your heart. That even if you hear a secular song, you will not be able to respond to it. These are the secrets of many of our fathers. That they have, they have a track record of dedication to God. They have a scandal-free existence. 
so much that we are beginning to think that they are angels is a lie their legs are tied in Yoruba church we used to sing one song I don't know if you know it Mama Jen Jalule, lay Jesu. Mami Olua, for Jamumi. And if you tie a baby behind you, you know, the baby can be, but you have locked the baby. And the movements of the baby on the ground will not respond to tears. It will respond to ah, and there are some women the way they tied your jar, the, the baby does not have hope. Even the way they jack the thing, they just go, ah, I'll be like, hey, the fate of that baby is sealed. Either they lose that thing or the baby remains on the back. So those babies cry till they sleep. There are systems of preservation like that in God. But they are initiated by dedication. When a man comes into a lifelong commitment of submission to the ownership of the Lord alone. That's the second definition of dedication. Do we have a scripture for it? Let's look at um, Acts chapter 17 verse 28. I hope I'm right. Jesus help me. The Bible says for in him we live. That's a boundary set for existence. And move. And have our being, our essence is derived. As certain also of your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. So I wrote here that by subscription to ownership, boundaries of existence in ancient times were set by owners. Which is something that dedication to Jesus will do. He will master you. Three. Dedication means making God the center of your life. And when we say making God the center of your life, we are saying making God the reason for your existence. You are the reason I live. And you are the one for me. Lord, you're the one for me. You are the Don't drag it, don't drag it, don't drag it. You're the one for me. You're the one for me.
Salvation means making God the center of your life. The reason for your living. I know you are in school to get a degree. But your degree must only be a means. A means to advancing the cause of Christ. I know you are doing business. And they say the end of business is making money. But the money you make will not be used to advance a cause that is outside the cause of the Christ. He becomes the reason for your existence. It means if it does not please him, it will not be done. If it will not please him, it will not be said. If it will not please him, it will not advance. I want to be big. But if smallness ever pleases you, I will be small. It's not wrong to be a billionaire. But if it does not bring you pleasure, let it not happen. It's not criminal to be popular. It's not a bad craving. But if you want me hidden forever, hide me. You see, there are questions that we need to ask ourselves when we have made claims to loving the Lord and all of that. And one of the questions will be, what is the center of my life? You see, the center of your life in architectural terms Oba, is the pillar that balances the structure. And the way to know the pillar that balances the structure is that you serially assault your pillars. You find out that some of those pillars in front of the house, those buildings only have aesthetic value. They are not carrying anything. The pillar of your life is the pillar that, or a house. You know, there are pillars, but the pillar is the one that if you crack it, the house will fall. Samson had some knowledge of architectural designs. So in the day that he became blind, he told the boy that led him to place his hand not on just any pillars. Help me find the verse. I want to, I want to look for the definition from scripture. Is that me there? So help me. I want to know what the pillars look like. There were from my book of Bible stories. How many pillars did he push? Two. Two. He just went that way, pushed two pillars. And the whole house came down. Now, you don't know how strategic those pillars were. Because only one man will have escaped. And his escape will have been supernatural. The man Samson. But he said, let me die with the Philistines. It means the pillars were so strategic that if they fell, everybody will die. Okay, the Bible called them two of the middle pillars like the central pillars upon which the house stood there were other pillars there were other beams but all those beams they were built into those two pillars if you shake them the house is flat so the bible said something took hold of the two middle pillars thank you lambda upon which the house stood and upon which it was born up so the pillars also had it means they had like a deck because the house stood on it and then it also bore the house up one on his right hand and the other on his left he just pushed two pillars and the bible claimed that at his death he killed more than his lifetime you don't know the number remember that there was a time he took out 1,000 to pay bride price. <laughs> hey, Samson was so much about himself. His, his energy was. Bride price. That one was not about God. It was a personal agenda. If 
fellowship with God. And I said, fellowship with God, like Pastor Lamde spoke to us, had to do with your engagement, your prayer. If you stop praying, and you stop fasting, and you stop reading your Bible, you stop worshiping, will your life stop? If your life continues, he's not the center of your life. That, that's it. Don't try to, but that's how to test. You, do, you can just, maybe there's one of your friends and that your friend in Yoruba is the, is the stick behind your fence. <laughs> Sometimes you should stop calling that friend for two days. If you find out that your life continues, it means that guy is no stick at all. Somebody comes and says, you better be my friend or, or hunger will kill you. And the snake, they call mana mana, you know it. They say that he dies by hunger. That, see, you will die by hunger. Give God half a chance. Just tell the person, we used to say it very well in school. You say, ah, you are not my God. You find out after one year, that demigod that, that said you will die like a snake is alive because God should not kill those people. If not, they will not witness my survival. They'll find out to survive them after one year. Then they will calm down. But the other side too needs to be checked in case it's only in church that you study scriptures. Only in church you pray. Only in church you sing. In case it's only unit fasting or church fasting that you do. And when you don't do those things, you can still make money. You can still pass exams. You're in Christ alone. My hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone. Dedication means making God the center of your life, the reason for your living. This stems from the understanding that life was not designed to be meaningful. Where God is not central. How many of you have been in a mathematics class before? I think everybody. When your labor is to draw a graph, Basic graphical expressions um, are gifted two axes. Am I right? Whether it is mass or physics or chemistry, you have what you call the vertical axis, which is your y axis. Somebody say x axis. Ah, alone. <laughs> and then your horizontal, which is your x axis. But you see, the coordinates on your y. And your x axis draw their reference from the zero. So your graph is not true if there is no starting point, and that's where zero is. Whether you are counting on the positive side or the negative side, there is a reference point. The people for ministry, for the church, and the church is not the building, is we. The Bible says that the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ being the cornerstone. So the apostles could be y-axis, the prophets could be x-axis, but what gives both of them reference 
is zero. Christ. So a graph is meaningless where there is no starting point. The Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. It starts with him and it ends with him. So this shade of dedication thrives on the consciousness that life has no meaning if God is not the center. What does he mean? It is gifting God the role as the purpose of your time, the purpose of your possession, the purpose of your giftings and talents, the purpose of your relationships, the purpose of your pursuits, the purpose of your achievements, everything that defines your existence in the earth will be gifted a purpose and that purpose is God. How do you make God the purpose of your time? Because we should answer that question. It is that your time becomes a tool in advertising the glory of God. Your tool, your, your, your pursuit, so that when you get the degree and you graduate with first class or every other class, I, I was going through, is it my former neighbor? No. I think guy's a pastor. Pastor, pastor, pastor. I'm not sure. But, but I know he's a ministry person. Yes, a ministry person. I was just going through his status. Briefly, this afternoon when we came in. And there was this music guy, Snoop Dogg, that was speaking. He achieved something. I mean, you know what he said? I want to appreciate myself for working hard. I appreciate myself for not giving up. I appreciate myself for staying up late. I just want to appreciate myself. And people applauded him. It's one pastor like that. I now felt, oh God, what gospel are you preaching? The gospel of self. That's the name of the gospel. I've not seen self advance in robust fashion like that before. There were eight things he said or so. And all of them was thanking himself. I would have, I, I felt, he would have said, I want to appreciate myself for giving myself life. If God was a man, after the second, I want to appreciate myself. He will say the rest somewhere else. <laughs> uh, he will be like that person that said, today I will, today I will. And then the word was, this night, this night, will take your life away from you. Self is the new God. And so God wants to build the streams of your existence. He wants you to build them around another center. If you don't make him the center, God doesn't become the center of any man's life by default. You will consciously make him the center and consciously labor to keep him as the center. Have you, have you taken boat or Uber before or you have used a map to journey? You know there's a way you say I'm going to, is a going on mapped? <laughs> I mean seriously mapped. Okay. Thank God. Okay. Because one time I went to Shogu and I was trying to get somewhere. After crossing the same roundabout three times, I now stop. I now follow the bike. <laughs> I now follow the bike. This thing kept saying turn right. After 400 meters, turn right. Until I now got into like a square. But it happened in Lagos. There are some inside, inside Lagos that you'll be going around. I saw Transformer two, three times. And I told the cabman, Oga, immediately Transformer, I let me town. 
And the thing was, the, and the arrogance with the voice is that he still keeps leading you. Say, turn left. After 500 meters, turn left. If you keep turning left after 500 meters, you'll be passing to the same place. No, check now. Turn left. Turn left. Turn left. Turn left. You'll, you'll be back. After four times there about, you'll be facing the same road again. So sometimes if you're going to a ladder and then you fix a ladder on your map, it shows you where you are. It shows you the road there. You know, there's a possibility to see other places. So you now move out. You can be seeing Pastor Body. I don't know if Pastor Body is there. You can be seeing Pastor Body, seeing tax phone. Then it would leave you with an icon. The icon will request if you want to recentralize the map. It means to go back to what was or your original focus. And then if you click, you will see that to come back to the journey between 40 and a lot. God has put those kind of systems in place. Many of them are not communications or by utterance. They are communications by experiences. Now when God is no more the center, the edifice that you have built called your life begins to, to shake. And that, that the quakings of your life are supposed to be an invitation to recentralize. You get to a point that you are a minister and after a while you run out of revelation. I hope you know it's possible. That's why I used to wake up to study like that because if you preach every day, preach every day, preach every day, different things. After a while, you hang. And remember that all these my sermons, those are the topics I'm studying for my sermons are not what Jesus is teaching me now. Intimacy is the emphasis of Jesus for Union Shu Ikire campus. Even the scattered Union Shu, their emphasis is different. This weekend, I'll be doing Union Shu on Friday and um, I have a world conference in Redeemers University on Saturday morning. The Union of Shun in Oshobo, their own theme is witnesses of light. Even though in my book, I may have changed the topic. Because what is in the Bible is witnesses of the light. Because Jesus is the light. He's not light. Are you with me? So, it's the same school, two different campuses. They have different emphasis. Because that's Ikire. This is Oshobo. And Revelations reveals to us that the emphasis of the Lord in a broad perspective is territorial. All right. Imagine that I now say this week you have intimacy. But the following day now became the glory of God. He now said not so. He now said part of the revivalist. I now did um, I know thy works. And in the evening of the Sunday I'm doing declaring harvest and um, this topic we are doing if I'm not careful I will be nourished at the level of my diverse audience and what is currently on the plate for me before Jesus will be abandoned so you need to stretch so when you find out that you are growing at the level of the people that you are ministering to and you have not ascended into your place in the Lord it's an invitation to decentralize. Sometimes you need to take a break from ministry to find your true north again so that you can journey well. When you find out that your only experiences in prayer is when you are closing conferences, bra, 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 and you can no longer pray to ascend as one man. And the way I even test myself is not personal ascension. It's the ability to generate energy to carry people. Because I was shaped to be a transporter. So it's one of the ways I back test. I start with Jesus as one man. That's what one of the things I did this evening. When I started, oh thank you Jesus. I didn't know what he wanted to do. I was just communing. And then my communion gave a feedback and that feedback came with an energy to suck people in. So part of my feedback is that that side, the Lord is telling me that side of you is still healthy. But I need to check the other side too. 
if I found out that it was not healthy, have you led people in prayer? You are praying hard, but they are not coming into prayers. Sorry, I'm being very petty. Have you gone for prayer meeting that after a while they now say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, stop, stop. Say, ah, is it prayer you are praying like this? You see that kind of thing before. You should tell the person, Oga, your prayer should be to suck us. Say, ah, pray, pray. Okay, let's pray again. You now know it means that something is wrong. You have spent your um, in 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 aerodynamics. It's the energy is called the lift. That's what gives the plane the capacity to lift the ground. So when you find out that you are lacking in that energy, it's a call to centralize. It means something has become your new object of focus. And sometimes it's not movies. Sometimes it's not the world. Sometimes it could be something good that you are doing in the kingdom. It can be preaching. It can be itinerant ministry. It can be singing. That you are so you are so obsessed with choir singing that Jesus no longer hears your voice. That you are so obsessed with winning souls. You just want a long list until depravity has found its way into your own soul. It's an invitation to decentralize. Are you getting me? So that's the design. It must be the center of your heart. Now I'm going to rush the last two because we are soon going to have a window out of this rain and I want us to maximize. That's what I was saying to Jesus when I kept quiet. Because I need to sleep. For dedication means fellowship with God that locks out both human and material distractions. So we started with dedicated journeying or following, then we went into dedicated ownership or sorry, dedicated submission unto God as the absolute owner. Then we went into um, dedication, making God the reason, the center of our life. For is called dedicated fellowship. And when you say that fellowship is dedicated, it is the kind of fellowship that comes with a world system. It locks out both human and material distractions. Lord, we are going to have four hours during the day. During those four hours, your phone will be off or in DND mode. Or you keep your phone inside your bag somewhere or switch it off. The reason why we have not experienced the fullness of God is that many times our fellowship is with half measures. I'm talking to God, but I'm expecting faith's call. And when a call comes in, I just, I'm praying. It's okay, I'll call you back, I'll call you back. There are even these wicked people that say, I'm praying, they won't hear you. So when you cut the call, they will call back. I think we should even agree on how to do phone calls. I think it's not a case of life and death or loss of loss of life or property. If you call somebody three times and it's not picking, you should entrust him to God. There are even people that you'll be cutting the call yourself, but they'll still be called. I mean, I used to think you did not even if you bought phone for me. labor to keep distractions away. That's one of the purposes to which we can put mountaineering or wilderness works. You just face that agreed side 
and go. Have they opened the hostels there? There are hostels down, down that side now. They've not opened them, but they've finished them. Or they're still under construction. You said 80 to 90 percent. Okay. So that's that's a good location. Don't go to Botanica Garden. Because there are people that will be coming to do picnic. And don't come here outside church because these people are distractions. They cook well. Sometimes their meals filter in and they can knock you out. The key to dedicated fellowship is that you sit down and list out your possible distractions. What is this thing that can come that can knock me out of fellowship? When you have listed them, you now build a defense system around them. Do you study your hard copy Bible and the one on your phone? The two. If you love studying on your phone, you might need to put your phone in flight mode. Even though you are on the land. So that you will not have WhatsApp messages because you know that any click you hear, even if it's from Opera Mini, you will first go and check. You will now come back. Ronaldo is, you click, but you are studying Psalm 23. You won't travel far that way. God wants his time with you. And by dedication, he can have his time. You don't know what one hour looks like in the spirit. Until you fully lock down one hour, there's so much you can do in one hour. When the disciples of Jesus were watching with him, Jesus, I'm not saying you should not go longer. I'm saying Jesus did not ask for too much. One hour. One hour of absolute lockdown. Just my Lord and I. Fellowship with God that locks out both human and material distractions. One that allows no others in between. Five. Dedication means unconditional commitment to God. Job 13, 15 is a very strong verse of scripture. Unconditional commitment. Though he slay me, yet I, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. So I will not bow to the mount of lies. I will not bow to the fiery furnace. If I die, I die. If, if I, I perish, I perish. But my Jesus must be Lord. That's, that's the song. Even if you slay me, or seem to delay me, I will never let go. I will never. I will never let go. And even if I'm lost, even if I'm lost, at any cost, at any cost, I will never let go. I will never let go. There is a summoning as of the Lord. And it is unto believers who will come beyond pleasure. That's dedication. Coming beyond pleasure. There is, there are deliverables in God that are designed to pleasure the God seeker. God is not wicked. There are things that come to you because you seek him that pleasure you. 
But God wants you to come beyond pleasure. He wants you to convert your pain. That was what launched Anna, the prophetess, into intercession. The loss of a husband brought pain. She converted the pain to stewarding the agenda of God. I remember when I first wrote my jam. Ah! I wrote one. And we went to Lonnie. I don't know what the person drank. My number was up. He drew line for my number and drew it down and gave me the score of the guy lower than me. I got 240. And 240 that time was strong. That year, the highest was 286. And I had 240. The guy now gave me 173. I was even the champion that day. One guy had wrote, written seven times. Law, University of Illinois. That year, I had 014. 14. Because of negative mark. All of us were calling him, Egban, Egban, Egban. The guy was saying, let them write it. So you, sup you, sup you, you deposit your jam slip. And then they will now trace and write. When they gave to Egban, Egban didn't talk to anybody. He was going home. One guy now rushed him. Down. Ah, let us see now. She will look bad jam for me. So, the guy now shouted, oh, one four. So, when, I, when they saw my 173, people shouted, you way, you way. But in my heart, God failed me. So, as I was going home in the public transport, I told God, I said, God, I will not serve you again. How can this boy? You know, I was like my spiritual father. We have many things in common. No? I believed in my mental capacities. The day I was going to write jam, people were going sanctimoniously. Me and my dad were jamming. There's this Baba Ayewa, you know him, about Ilaku. That's why we were jamming in the car. And people say this boy get confidence. And I had confidence. I had my whole transit was that if an angel wrote an exam, I will pass. I mean, if it's an angel that said the question, this boy, I'll pass. Mathematics, biology, physics, and chemistry. Not even for that mass. If you give me a, a 70 over 70 exam for that mass, if you mark me less than 65, you will remark that script. It's not my script. Who is called who's called 60 over 70 for that mass? That's uh, I'm not cost now. That's how I operated. I now saw 170, and they said the way you so I told God, I will never. I remember I was BSF, I think association president that time. I said, me, I will never serve God again. So mommy now encouraged me. God is faithful. That I should go back and check. Because I said I was not going to write another jam. So I went back after two weeks. Unfortunately, they, they had not erased the line. So the guy just followed the line again. Until after three months. The Lord said I should take another jam from me. I told everything I want to read for jam, me I've read. I'll just go and write the exam. Then my, my two slips now came, 240. I walked into my daddy's office and my first thing was, Shebi, I told you. I can't jam for. <laughs> I can't feel an exam now. But I lost out on it. And I gained me now. And I'm grateful to Jesus. Well, I was a child anyway because I, I just felt we had business now. But if I knew what many of you know now, if I knew that time, I wouldn't make that kind of confession. God has done enough for you that even if you see an F, you can walk past it. I had one F like that in another level. CH 111. We used to do organic chemistry. There was another branch of chemistry that we used to do in another level. Organic is the hydrocarbons. But there was another chemistry where you do all these separation techniques. I don't even know how somebody feels that aspect of chemistry. I swore that I will not write it again because I passed. Final year, my friends who wrote it, all of them. 
had a star year. God told me, don't write it. You will graduate. So I left it. If he doesn't tell you, go and write it. I said he told me. I didn't. I first determined he now told me in 500 level. Don't re register that course. The guy managing that course put him for chemical engineering. They gave him chemistry. So, the guy, I think, is angry that we're about to get a degree that he could not get. If your script is missing in CH 111 that time, you cannot find it. And it only happens to chemical engineering students. So everybody who wrote in 500 level, they failed all of them. It was the same man. So they had a try in. I remember only two of us. I told my friend that God said I should not write. So she followed my faith. I remember her name. She's from Joss, Victoria Bock. Very intelligent. I had this intelligent short, short female friends. They, they are the ones that used to help me sometimes. So I said, Victoria, don't write, don't write. Tolu, don't write. And we graduated. All those are our friends, almost about 40 of them, came back to 2 ch When I saw that CH111 failure 100 level, I just walked past. God has done too much to say I won't serve him. I knew I was created to serve somebody. If I don't serve God, who will I serve? Somebody asked me a few years ago, sir, what if ministry gets tough? Where will you go? My question was, where can I go? What, what else can I do? <laughs> no. no where, where do I want to start from? I have certificates, but you mean I'll go and sit in an office and be using, is it MATLAB now? There, there's one strange software like that too for design. We call it HISIS. In um, chemical engineering, to do designs now. Ah. If you bring me, in, I would I would rather wait till I can command a process part to emerge by itself. I can't go back. The bridges are burnt. That's why I'm hard on where I'm going. If I don't, if I don't make it, if there's anything like it, if I don't make it with God. I don't have hope. So it has to be God or, or God. That's where I am now. If God is angry with me, my wife will go hungry. Sure banker. <coughs> where is my wife? I told her something this afternoon. I said, as the Lord lives, you will not smell hunger. That's what I told her. I said that it's not because I have money in the bank. My relationship with God secures a lifetime of supplies for you. If you see God asking. I don't have options. God knows. I don't have options. But one of the reasons why I don't have options is that he has showed me enough not to have options. For I have searched through all eternity long and found there is none like you. That's my testimony. I've tried using my mind. I've seen the limitations. So if the Holy Spirit says, let me think through your way, I already say, think it through. That's for me who claims intelligence. Daniel, if you meet me in a competition, don't write the exam. You likely go home. I was like the Roger Federer of, of mathematics. That even if you know what to write, you're afraid that this boy, this boy, this boy. If you meet me in a debating team, if I talk before you, you can talk against yourself. I was a threat. And I used to glory in it. So those my F's. I have two F's in hundred level. CH one one one. Then physics one two one. I wrote that one. Jesus humbled me. I wrote it. From that time, I had no confidence in the flesh. <sighs> Let 
this stage of dedication requires help. It requires help. Where a man's commitment to God becomes unconditional. There are certain encounters that produce unconditional dedication. And my cry to Jesus is that he will bring you through those corridors. Dedication in unconditional dimensions is the testimony of a life that does not depend on what God does or does not do. A life that stays because of the perceptions, oh sorry, a life that stays because of the perceived constancy of the character of God. God has advertised himself to you by an encounter that he cannot lie. And so if things go south, that means things go bad, you know that God can use something that went bad to still fulfill what he told you because he cannot lie. So they are not encounters in frivolity. They are encounters that advertise the constancy of the character of God. I know what dying looks like. I can describe my 2020 experience. October 3rd. It's like you go through a dark tunnel. That's what I saw. Injection 1. Injection 2. And it was like a dark tunnel. It was like a dark tunnel. It was like a dark tunnel. I was standing. You know when they inject you, pull up your trousers. I was trying to pull up my second trouser. And then it became very dark. And it was like I was going down a tunnel. Very fast. The next time I opened my eyes, I saw my wife with mucus coming out of her nose, screaming, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I came up with a smile. I told you to not be on the hospital table. And I came down and I went home. How many minutes? It's eight minutes. That God keeps promises. So if a witch comes and says, do show, show, show. It's not me that he came to kill. He, he's just excited. <laughs> it's not me. Because I, 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 death has been shown to me. I didn't die in the hands of a witch. No. A witch can try many things. That did not try death. It will be unsuccessful. And what keeps it that way is that the one who told me you don't have the, in your possibilities of death, you don't have death by witchcraft there. He cannot lie. When he said it to me, he took potency from witches. The ability to kill. May God show you his character. Every man who sees it, we end up a man dedicated to God in unconditional dimensions. The patriarchs of old went through corridors of trials. And their trials produced a face of God that gave them boldness. What did Job know? That made him say, even if you slay me, yet I will trust you. What did Daniel know? That even at the risk of lions, that you know there was no antecedent to that case. Nobody has gone into a lion's den and survived before. So Daniel did not say, if you did it before, you can do it again. Nobody had entered into a fiery furnace, not a furnace. If you put bread in that furnace, it's charcoal you want to have, you want to harvest. Because it was a fiery furnace. It means a furnace of great intensity. No man ever entered. For them to ensure that they born well, they now cooked up the fire seven times so that the men who threw them in died by bonds. The heat was what killed them. The men that entered now entered AC. So they said, we know the character of God and his character reveals that he has potentials. But his character also reveals that he only flashes what he has when he wants to. But we will not bow to him. He 
Is there a young lady who is saying, I may not have seen God the provider before. But I know that he promised, he never fails his promises. He's a promise keeper. Rather than compromise and be fed, I will choose hunger. Let's go home. The last point, point six. Dedication means taking sides with God even when every other person is on the other side. Exodus 32, 26. Who is closing the service? Exodus 32, 26. Then Moses stood in the gate of of the camp and said who is on the Lord's side let him come unto me and all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him they were a minority but they had finished it in their heart that it will be God and God alone there's one old CNS I your new song in me I do roti Jesus Ninu ni aju ayemi to lolani to lani to lani to lolani kesemi mashe ni di duro emi duro mu duro ti oluwa. Ah, my voice. Sorry. Um, please help me find that song too. I, I think I should go to those songs and be listening to them. When he closes with Jesus, baby, me oh. Magenta Kalaya. That's the songs we grew up with. I will stand with you in my life's journey. Because you are the only one who can save. You are the only one that can bring truth. I will stand with you in my life's journey. Because you are the only one who can save me so that my feet will not sleep. With bowed heads, don't come too far. There are six things I mentioned, but you can approach. you find out that the earlier ones were easier. The ones behind are more difficult. Standing alone, coming through unconditionally. You can come at your level, but ensure that there is a commitment in intensification that you are making tonight. That Lord, I used to take one step with you. Tonight I take two. Um, Pastor, come and help me push these prayers. Agiata <laughs> 
kabakabias akta kaka te akata kababa bele brokos koboko buya rakabai akta koko pok brokos kobrega didi bichok to kobre abrakadira baka brokos jete kadiras abrakababa bila brekadira bashakta kadiasha abrakabila brakadira basha Abrakababa balias kapa ko prokos ke brega dide bashakta kanai emi kapa ko prokos so brega tina katom brega dide bekoskes ayaka tele brega dide bakapra kaba bele brega dide bashiat eme geto braka bila braka tira bashis ele brega toko prokos yata kabai. Abra katosko brega dele brega dida bashakta katai akta kaka toko broko zone meke di askatai arya kaka kata kavali askabare beko brega dira shies maraba kabele brega dira shakta kava ko broko zies jete keko brega dira bashakta kama brega dira bashie ai kaka toko brega toko brega dira shies. Ate ketolo broko zete keti aska baba haya. Akoko broko zete ke giata kata kata hai. Ata tata kaba kom broko zote kobe giata kaba hai. O breke te ke te kats kata kata kaba hiyas. Akata kata hai. I never let go. Bila kabo kom breke ti kaba shakta kata hai. Jete ketolo broko bebe bila braka baba kaba ketosko broko to. Aye kata 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 soto kotias lekta kokra tosko broko zias kata na makai adi kata kaboko broko zias sata o koko toko breke toko breke di de bashakte kana je kako breke tele boko braka kata kavali asa baba baru ya kata aka kato ko broko boko poria ka baba bali aka kata kata ka baba bali boko breke teke tele boko breke tele boko breke di asakta ka Allah braka kata kata ka baba shesa ele breke teke di kaska ta kata Even if it takes me to stand alone Even if it takes me to stand alone Even if it takes me to lose men Nende kobro kobo kobre ke tele akaba kia na makata Oh what shall separate us from the love of Christ What shall separate us from the love of Christ Legetele shall anka, melegetele brokobo shall nakedness, melegetele brokobo koberiasha. Oh, regede wokom brokoto ke, oh, barebegetele brokobo kotiasha. With death, with the fear of death, meleko brokobia shata kaba. Not even the fear of death. No rope can break it. The gate will never come back. We are shut down. Not relevance. Not fame. Not the stage. Me le kobro kobo kumbre kataka me le break it. Tira basha. Oh, ria kata. I will stand. I will stand. Men ne kobro kosi atakaba. Oh, greke to kobro kosi atakaba ke dia shata kana. Oh, men ya kata la ba kobro kosi ana makata. We know that by strength it is impossible. By human strength, it is impossible. We come tonight seeking the spirit of help. That you come and administer help. We have made commitments. We have made dedications. 
And we cannot fulfill them in our human strengths, in our human capacities. It will take you, the spirit of help, to aid us. We are from the infirmities. That's why scripture says the spirit is the one who helps our infirmities. We have seen the essence for making the dedications and we have made them. But tonight our cry is that you will help us keep these promises. You will help us keep these dedications in the name of Jesus. We come weak and we ask that you administer help. Thank you gracious God for tonight. Thank you for your word that has proceeded forth. Thank you because we know we will be blessed by this. In that the world will become flesh. We say thank you Father. For in Jesus mighty name we have prayed.